nakakulong si Lawrence at dahil sa kwarto ng binata ngayon. His parents were both abroad dahil may business trip din ang inatenda ng papa niya at sumama rin ang mama niya for vacation. Ang kanang kami ni Valerie marang dumaustos pataas at bababa sa kanyang katawan. Valerie was naked beside him. Tatlong araw na si Valerie dito sa condo niya sa Makati. It was summer break at wala sa bahay ang mga magulang niya kaya nag-stay muna siya sa condo nila for more freedom. Anyway, malapit din ng condo na matalik niyang kaibigan, si Archie, what happens to be Valerie's older brother. He looked at this young, pretty lady beside her. She was just 18, barely out of college, habang senior sa salin ni Archie at Gael sa elite university yung pinapasukan. But despite her young age, he did not know why he couldn't resist her. Maybe because she was forbidden? Kapatid si Lauren sa matalik niyang kaibigan, so he knew nothing could ever come out of this relationship. Iahatid na kita pa uwi. Gabi na, besides malayo pang bahay ninyo. Umiling si Valerie. Can I just stay here for the night? She pouted and gave him those puppy dog eyes. Those eyes were the sole reason why he was caught up in this mess. His body carved her ever since that night na natikman niya ito. That night was almost a year ago kaya halos isang taon na rin ang patagong setup nilang tatlo. But despite that he still remained him, firm on his decision hindi sila maaaring magkaroon ng public relationship o kahit anong official relationship. Archie would kill him if he knew. Valerie, we both know hahanapin ka din natin sa Rita. Tatlong araw ka nang di umuwi. They think I'm with Margo. I'll just tell him na nag-decide kami ng extend ng sleepover. Umiling lang si Lawrence and stood up from the bed to get a towel from the bathroom. Pagkabalik ka sa kama, binigay niya yun kay Valerie. Clean up, Valerie. Iahatid kita tonight. He firmly said at nagbiis ang damit. He saw the disappointment on her face. Asungit mo? She commented bago tumayo tumiretso sa bathroom. Valerie may never see it but she was always wanting for something more. Something he couldn't give. But she hasn't said anything kaya nanatili na lang siya ding hindi natahimik. At least he can never have her secret. Valerie breathed heavily na makarating sa tapat ng bahay nila. It was 9 in the evening at ayaw pa sana niyang umuwi, but Lawrence forced her. Good night. Matulog ka na agad. Uwi ka ni Lawrence sa nasa driver's seat. Hindi ka man lang bababa. My mom would be happy to see you, she offered. We can have coffee. Valerie, they don't know you were with me. Baka magulat silang inihatid kita. Baka mamaya magsuspecha pa sila. Tutul ni Lawrence, sasaya siya ng dalaga. Then we'll just tell them na sinundo mo ako kay na Margo for dinner. Tapos inihatid mo na rin ako pa uwi. Dinner? Ano ang iisipin nila? That we are together now? That question hurt her. Sa para ng pagkakasabi nito, parang ayaw na ayaw nitong malaman ng ibang tao na nagkikita sila. Much more her parents. Sorry, papasok na ako. Para si Valerie sinaksak ng ilang lebes. Sabi, sinabi ng banata. Oo nga naman, di nga naman sila. Ano pa bang i-expect niya? They have been like this for a year now. Only meeting in secret. Hindi niya po pwedeng ipagsabi sa kaibigan niyang ginagawa niya because a part of her was ashamed of herself. She is sleeping with a childhood friend na crush niya simula ng bata pa sila but he never is serious enough to ask her out and be in a real relationship with her. However, she couldn't get out of this set up. As much as she wants a real relationship with him, kung ayaw nito wala siya magagawa, ayaw niyang mawala ito sa buhay niya. So if bed warmer lang talaga siya para dito, then she would take it. Good night. Tipid na paalam ni Lawrence. She nodded and then got out of the car to walk towards her gates. After dropping her off, umalis na rin to. She just sighed before entering. How was Singapore? Balita ko na yung maraw binili. Tatawa to ang wika ni Samantha sa kaibigang si Ashley. Your husband Ryan was complaining to Yeko about it yesterday. Tawa lamang sinigot ni Ashley. Well, you know how much I love a beautiful clothing collection. I saw this designer in Singapore. She is Chinese but she has the most beautiful boutique. Napabili ako ng mga sampung gowns from her collection. I also brought you home this. Sarita accepted the box and opened it to see a dainty summer hat. Oh my god, this looks so nice. I also brought one home for your beautiful daughter. Sakto papasok ni Valerie sa living room. Kagagaling lang yung school for an org project na inorganize niya. She leads a community organization in school na nagbibigay ng donations sa mga orphans sa iba't ibang orphanage sa Pilipinas. There she is, my beautiful, kind-hearted daughter. Sarita exclaimed. Halika muna dito, iha. May regalong dala sa iyong antita Ashley mo. Hi, tita. Bati ni Valera sa kaibigan na mama niya, who happens to be Lauren's mother. Iha, paganda ka talaga ng paganda. May boyfriend ka na ba? Tuwang-tuwang tanong nito sa kanya. Po? Ah, uh, wala po. She replied while trying to keep a straight face. Had your tita Ashley only knew. Valerie was always sneaking in his son's condo to do the stuff with him. Naku, dapat mo boyfriend ka na. 18 ka na, hindi ba? Ang mama mo nga nagpakasalat 18 eh. Suhol pa nito. Gaga ka, Ashley. 
Well, fix marriage naman yung amin ng papa niya eh. I don't want my daughter to be forced on anything. Tama ka naman, but anyway, iha, come here. Take my gift. At inibot ni Ashit sa kanya isang box. Salamat po. I hope you enjoyed your trip in Singapore and Malaysia. O, oh, alam mo nag-Malaysia din kami? Gulat na tanong ni Ashley. Uh, Lawrence just mentioned he was with Kuya Archie the other day. She quickly answered, Oh my gosh, she almost slipped. Oh, okay. Enjoy it, Iha. Perfect ang regalo ko for the beach. Ngumiti na lang si Valerie bago nagdire-diretso patas ng kwarto. God, she was tired. Hindi niya ina-expect na nandun pa ang tita Ashley niya. Iniwan niyang box sa study table niya, patanin ang bag niya, at tumiga kagad sa kama. It was summer break but her org is taking too much of her time. She needs rest. She looked at her phone but still there were no calls from the one person she misses. It has been three days since they last saw each other. Bumukas ang pinto niya. She was lying on the bed facing the windows kaya hindi niya nakita ko sinang pumasok. Mom, I'm tired. Saka na tayo magplan ng charity ball mo. She said assuming that it was her mother. But when the visitor sat on the bed beside her and started kissing her name, naalarma siya at napaupo bigla. Lawrence? Hey! Nakangiting bati ni Lawrence. It was only her bedside lamp that was open. And the little light coming from there gave off such a sexy vibe for this being who was in front of her. Naka white t-shirt lang to pero mukhang model ng Abercrombie and Fitch. What are you doing here? Takang takang tanong ni Valerie. I was with Archie. We were just hanging out. Gail is also here. Nasa bagali lang kami. Wanna join us? Umiling siya. Pagod na kasi ako eh. I had a long day. Lawrence moved closer to him and pinned some stray hair of hers beside her ears. You still look pretty at the end of the day. And he kissed her firmly on the lips. Nang pakawalan siya nito, tinitigan niya ito sa mga mata. You haven't called. He exclaimed and just shrugged. Should I? I mean, I have nothing to say. That broke her heart a little again. But he was quick to make amends as his lips moved down her cheeks to her neck this time. They might look for you. She said trying her best to push him at tutulong ang binabalak nito. They are both drunk. They think I'm looking for the bathroom. But the truth is, I saw you come into the house and I wanted to kiss you right there and then. His hand started roaming inside her shirt now. Our parents are just downstairs, pero hindi pa rin mapigilan to. His lips have started roaming down to her neck, to her chest. Na-unbutton na itong white polo shirt na suot niya ngayon. God, he was driving her crazy. Anytime now, pupwedeng hanapin ang kapatid niya si Lawrence. And I might be found out. Did he even lock her door nang pumasok to kanina? But all those worries disappeared when his hands went inside her skirt. I miss you, babe. He quickly stood up to unzip his pants and pull it down. Let's make it quick. She ordered him. She knew they shouldn't be doing this, but her body couldn't say no to him. Matalino naman siya, pero parang natatanga talaga siya kapag di niya nakakausap to. Her mind and her body craves for him at all moments. Nawala sa isip niya na nasa bahay sila at nasa baba lang ang mga magulang nila. Was she really that stupid? That was amazing. He said and kissed her on the lips. You are amazing as ever. Thanks. Was all she could say before fixing her top and skirt. I wonder why hindi ka pa nagkaka-boyfriend. Anyone would be lucky to have you. Any man but you. I haven't met the right one. Tipid na sagot niya. Might he? Lawrence stood up and pulled his pants up again. I'll go back outside. Baka hinahanap nila ako. Take a hot bath. That will relieve the tiredness. And try to sleep early, okay? Tumango na lamang siya. Good night, Valerie. And he left her room as quickly as he came. Napasa pa na lang sa ulo si Valerie. What is this mess she is currently in? After eight years. Ma, may nagpadala po na regalo sa baba para daw po sa inyo. Balita ng sekretary ni Valerie pagdating niya ng opisina. She works for her family's foundation now at ngayon, busy siya sa proyektong pagpapatayo ng bahay para sa mahihirap. Thanks, Angel. Just drop it on my table. Mabait na uto si Valerie at pinagpatuloy ang pag-ayos ng article na i-release sa press para sa project. Angel dropped a gift box sa tabi ng laptop niya at tumabas na ng opisina niya. It wasn't her birthday so who would this be from? May kutob na si Valerie kung kanino galing to pero ayaw pa rin niya mag-assume. She picked up the box, pulled the ribbon and unwrapped it. Inside was a black box at pagbukas niya dito isang one-piece lace lingerie ang nakita niya. Dali-dali niyang kinuha ang card sa loob at tinaklaban ulit yun. Hindi magandang makita ng mga tauhan niyang nireregaluhan siya ng mga ganong bagay. She opened the card and read, See you tonight, L.A. The signature was all too familiar and she dropped the card on the table. How long has it been? Eight years? Eight years na siyang nagpapakatanga sa lalaking to. Yes, she loves him. Bakit ba siya maghihintay na magbagong isip nito for eight years kung hindi niya ito sobrang mahal? 
but still they remain in the setup as they have created since they were in college. Na hindi nila alam ni Valerie kung may tatawag sa kanila at nahiya siya kami na sa sarili kung ano nga ba talaga sila. But her love for him grew as time passed by. Bata pa lang sila, he has always been her companion, her protector. Kaibigan to ng kuya niya kaya palagi ito nasa bahay nila. And their families were long-time family friends kaya palagi rin sila nakikita especially during travels. It all started when they traveled to Europe as a family nine years ago. Lauren's family was also there. He shared a hotel room with his and her brother. Archie, her parents and his parents did not mind. For all they know, magkakapatid lang ito ililas sa isa't isa. But that night was still as crystal clear as if it was just yesterday. Florence, Italy, nine years ago. It was 11 o'clock in the evening already, pero wala pa rin si na Archie at Lawrence. Mag-isa pa rin sa hotel room niya si Valerie. They were on their sixth day in Europe and Italy ang unang destination nila. They roamed around in Florence the whole day at pinagbiyan naman ang mga wulang nila na humiwalay for dinner ang kapatid niyang si Archie, pati si Lawrence. It was a family trip pero kasama din ang pamilya ng mga Arceo. Her dad Raymond and Lawrence's dad Ryan were also long-time friends. Siguradong nasa bar na taglalasing ang kapatid niya, pati na rin si Lawrence. So she decided to take a decent bath at gamitin ang malaking jacuzzi sa CR doon. Siguradong gagawin pa silang dalawa bago makauwi. Or better yet, uumagahin na. She knew how sneaky they both were with the girls. So she was replying with a glass of wine inside the jacuzzi. At dala rin ang pagod buong araw, hindi na yung Valerie na malayan na napailip na pala siya ng kaunti. The water was so hot and relaxing na pakiramdam niya, hinihele siya sa pagtulog. Valerie? Her eyes shut open at the sudden intruder. At nakita niyang halos na istatong binata sa harapan niya, looking at her with eyes wide open. She looked at herself and saw na nawala ng bubbles na kanina'y napakarami at nagtatalsika ng katawan niya. So her bare breasts were visible for Lawrence who was right in front of him. So she screamed at napatayo para namabas ng jacuzzi at takbahin ng towel sa corner. But since her feet were wet, nadulas siya sa mabilis sa paglabas ng jacuzzi. But good thing Lawrence was able to catch her or else, mababangasan na maganda niyang mukha. So now she was sprawled naked on top of him. Are you okay, Valerie? Anong ginagawa mo dito? Galit na tanong ni Valerie. You were supposed to be out with Kuya Archie. I'm sorry, I went back early because I was tired already. And Archie was still talking to a random girl in the bar. Pag-amin ni Lawrence. Let go of me. Para na ni Valerie dito at pilit na tumayo while covering her body. Don't look. Fine, I'm sorry. Akala ko walang tao besides. You did not even lock the door. Because I thought you were done. She defended herself and stood up carefully to get the towel and quickly wrap it around her body. At nakatulog ako kaya hindi ko rin narinig na bumalik ka na pala. Lawrence was facing the door while talking to her. I'm sorry. Had I known, I wouldn't have entered. I'm really sorry, Valerie. Yun lang at lumabas na ito. Pulang-pula ang mukha ni Valerie na makalabas ang binata. Gosh, he has seen her fully naked. Hiyang-hiya siya sa sarili. Mabilis siyang nagbihas at tiniyo ang buhok. Pagkatapos sumabas siya ng bathroom. She tried her best to pretend that nothing happened just a few minutes ago. The bathroom is free. You can use it. She announced at umupo na sa kama niya. Lawrence was on the sitting area of the suite, watching television. Tumangwa lang ito at pumasok na sa bathroom. Wow! At ito pang may ganang magalit sa kanya matapos siya nitong silipan kanina. She was fuming with anger when she propped herself on her bed at nagtago na sa ilalim ng duvet. Hindi man lang nagsorry sa kanya. Bago pa tumakalabas ang bathroom, dumating na rin si Archie at tugon mo rin nilang siyang tulog. She had enough drama for the day. The next day, wala si Valerie ka nang sumama sa trip na nakaschedule for that day. Maraming napagod siya sa walang tigil na tours and trips last six days, kaya ako nagkaroon siya ng sipon. Valerie woke up with a head cold at nagpaalam na sa mga magulang na hindi sasama. They were sad to see her stay pero walang magawa ito na makita ang di nga maayos ang pakiramdam niya. Her whole family has left the hotel already at namabukas mo na yung pinto ng hotel room niya. You came back? Gulat na tanong ni Valerie na makita ang si Lawrence ang pumasok. He just shrugged. You were sick. Walang maghahalaga titingin sa'yo kung mag-isa ka dito. I can just sleep. I just need to rest. Tipid na sagot niya. We can rest together. We can ni Lawrence. He opened the television across the bed. Pagkatapos sumarap na sa kanya and lifted his hand to her face. What are you doing? Masungit ang tanong ni Valerie. I just wanna feel your forehead. At tinilapat ni Lawrence ang kamay sa noo niya. You're a bit hot. Hindi rin siguro nakabuti nagbabad ka kagabi sa jacuzzi. Oh, that jacuzzi. Think again. Drink this. Uto si Lawrence sa kanya at ilabot ang isang tablet galing sa maleta nito. Okay na ako, Valerie. I said drink this. She looked at him and saw na seryoso ito kaya kinuha niyang tablet and swallowed it. Lawrence then handed her a glass of water. 
about yesterday. It was an accident. We don't need to talk about it. Inanahan na ni Valerie to. She just was not comfortable talking about that incident, but she really wanted to hear an apology from him at least. You should learn to lock the door. Paano na lang kung hindi ako nagbukas ng pinto? My brother would not just laugh if it was him. Depensa niya sa sarili. But you are a grown woman, Valerie. Hindi ka na bata. Biglang sigaw ni Lawrence sa kanya na ay kinagulat niya. You are 17, for goodness sake. Paano kung lasing na Italyanang pumasok dito at nagkamali ng kwartong pinasukan and he saw you, what then? Then I could have just covered myself? Like the hell you will. Men don't just turn around when they see a naked woman. Galit na galit pa rin sigaw ni Lawrence. Don't you understand? You should at least learn to protect yourself now. Your body is. It's not that of a kid anymore. I know that and I'll be more careful next time. She did not know what else to say. Ibinawa na lang niyang basa ng tubig sa bedside table. I'm serious. Your security is not something to take lightly. Men can take advantage of your two lacks. Stop worrying. Tapos na. It is not as if I was raped or something. It was you, not a stranger. Yes, thank God it was me because a normal man won't be able to stop himself from enjoying you the moment he saw you. Natigilan si Valerie sa sinabi nito. What does he mean by that? Napasalamat siya hindi siya ganun ka-attractive para dito kaya nakontrol niyang sarili? He stood up and created some distance between them. Steve, if you want, I'll just be right here. It hit a nerve, so she just had to ask. Everyone in school knew she was attractive, so she just couldn't stand the fact that he doesn't see her as much. Don't you find me attractive? Was it because we grew up together? His face turned to her again, in shock. She looked down in pain because he couldn't even answer. Lawrence has always been her childhood crush, pero kahit kailan hindi ni Valerie ito nakita ng interest sa kanya. He has always only ever treated her as a younger sister. If kinds of annoyed her sometimes. Lawrence suddenly sat beside her on the bed and lifted her shoulders. You don't know what I felt when I saw you last night, Valerie. I wanted to kiss you so bad and just, just do anything I want with you. Nagulat si Valerie sa biglang pag-amin nito. And then she saw him gaze at her lips with longing this time around. Before she could even blink, his lips were on hers, kissing her thoroughly like it was the water that he needed. His tongue darted in and out of her mouth, creating circles. It was the first kiss and it instantly sent electricity all throughout her body. What's this feeling? He stopped suddenly and looked at her. Tell me you're okay with this because I will stop if you don't want me to do this. He whispered. Okay lang ako dito at yun ang kanyang unang halik at unang lahat. Kasama nito sa hindi inaasahan. Valerie was in the middle of daydreaming about her first time with Lawrence na miglang nagring ang iPhone niya. Mabilis itong kinuha at nakitang tumatawag si Lawrence. Hey babe. Bati ng kabilang linya. Hey yourself, dito ka ba talaga nagpadala ng galong ganito? Sa opisina? What if may ibang nagbukas dito? Ano nilang iisipin nila? Medyo inis pang tanong ni Valerie sa binata. Chill Valerie, hindi naman siguro nakikiram ang secretary mo sa personal mong buhay. What's with tonight? Bakit kailangan mo ako makita? Should there be a reason for us to see each other? I just miss you. Masyado ka nang busy. Hindi ka na dumadaan sa kondo. Well, I'm starting a new project. Pagdadahilan niya, but in reality, she was really starting to think it's true. It has been 8 years, pero kahit kailan, hindi ito nagtanong kung gusto ba niyang gawin official relationship nila so that she could be his girlfriend finally. She has been in deep pain dahil halos lahat ng mga kaibigan niya ay kinakasal na. Ang kanyang matalik na kaibigan na si Margo ay kinasal lamang ilang buwan na nakakalipas habang siya ay single sa mata ng marami. Even her parents are starting to get worried dahil hindi na siya nagdadate. Come on, babe. I'll pick you up. Hindi magandang puro trabaho ka na lang. Sad ni Lawrence. I am really busy, Lawrence. I'm sorry. Malamig na tugon ni Valerie. How did you let this go on for eight years? Ganun ba talaga siya katanga? O ganun siya katakot na mawala to sa buhay niya if she demanded for something more? Mabilis ni Lawrence si binaba ang tawag. She has to really start thinking about her future. She is only 26, pero ayaw niya na maging tanga para si isang lalaking di naman siya sineseryoso. She looked at her watch, 4 p.m. She was about to fix her stuff already nang biglang pumasok sa office niya ang mama niya. Sarita Blanco is the chairman of the Blanco Foundation. Mayroong pinapamahalan na architectural firm ang mama niya. She has always looked so young and fresh kahit pa nasa 40s na ito. Mama! Marita ko, busy ka pa rin dito at di pa nagla-launch. Pula nito sa kanya. Tinatapos ko ng press release para sa Housing Phase 2 project. Mag-enjoy ka naman, Iha. Ano to? A gift? From home. Biglang tanong nito, looking curiously at the black velvet box on her table. Patay, wala yan ma. 
Mas mataas ang talo ng boses ni Valerie kaysa karaniwan. Galing ba to kay Gael? Kakawi lang niya sa Pilipinas. Pero di ko alam na ganito kabilis ang galaw niya, ha? Si Gael po? Takang-takang tanong ni Valerie. Gael was also another childhood friend. Sa iyo iso nag-aaral ng master's degree nito for two years now. Yes, I think it's time for you guys to both know. And if this is from them, him, then I guess alam din ni Gael. Alam mo ma? Bilang wala ka ng boyfriend, pakiramdam na namin ng papa mo. Ay wala kang balak maghanap ng boyfriend. We are planning to fix you up with Gael. Biglang anunsyo na lamang ng mama ni Valerie. He is the perfect groom, iha. Comes from a good family, a soul heir, at isa pa walang girlfriend. Well, as far as I know, Esmeralda never mentioned Gael having a girlfriend or introducing any girl. Much like you. Ma, I'm not someone you can just marry off. This isn't normal. Well, it's just in the talks. Nasa inyo na kung papay ka, pero talagang pinagpanuhan ng tatay mong ideyang to. Ano? We want to see you married off with kids, anak. Hindi ka na buo bata. 26 ka na, hindi ka pa rin nagkaka-boyfriend. Huminga si Valerie ng malam at sinubukan pakalmay ng sarili bago sumagot. Ma, it's a personal choice, okay? Pero sige, may naligaw man lang ba sa'yo ngayon? Or at least a special someone you can introduce to us. Paghahamo ng mama niya. She was speechless. Ano nga bang sasabihin niya? She can never tell her mom the real score between her and Lawrence because really, there is nothing to tell. Maliban sa magkaibigan sila who occasionally have make love. See? You cannot even mention one name. Valerie, you've been such a perfectly obedient daughter for so long. I love you for it. Your dad and I love you for being like that. Pero iha, you have to start looking for a husband now. If you won't do it, kami ng papa mong bahala. Esmeralda is also fed up with Gael. I think both of you have a lot in common and will benefit in this union. Just give it a try. Date him. Tingnan mo lang. Wala namang mawawala, di ba? Totoo naman ang lahat ng sinabi nito. Okay, mom. I'll give it a try. Great. Sige, I will let Esmeralda know para makausap niya si Gael so that we can set a date. I'm excited, iha. By the way, ano ba itong pasarubong ni Gael sa'yo? Talong nito habang inaabot ng itim na velvet box sa mesa. But before her mom could open it, naago na yun ni Valerie. Ma, you should go. This is not really from Gael. Mga chocolates lang to from Margo. Ah, ganun ba? Diet ako na we. Sige, iha, I'll see you at home. May 5 p.m. meeting lang ako sa baba. Okay, mom. Bye. Huminga siya na malalim at tumingin sa black velvet box na hawak niya. Naglalakad si Valerie sa parking lot papunta sa kanyang sasakyan habang bit-bit ang regalo ni Lawrence nang harangin siya na isang puting Ford Mustang. Hop in! Tinitigan lang ni Valerie ang binata. What? Lawrence asked, looking at her quizzically. Are you not in the mood? Masyado bang hectic ang araw na to? He went out of the car looking dashing in his suit pants and white long sleeve polo. Walang nectay sa leg nito ngayon. Muntik nang makita ni mama itong regalo mo. At tumawa lang si Lawrence. Babe, what's wrong? You're hot. That looks good only on you. Inabot niyang box sa binata. I don't need it and I don't want it. Tara na, Valerie. Pagod na ako tumimiss na kita. Dalawang linggo na tayong di nagkikita. Hindi mo ba ako pwedeng bigyan ng oras? Pag mamakaawa ni Lawrence. Why? Wala ka bang ibang babaeng matawagan? At biglang naging seryoso ang mukha ng binata. You were seen out with a model two weeks ago. Sabi pa ni Valerie dito. Who happens to be the latest endorser of one Philippine Airlines? Depensa pa ni Lawrence sa sarili. Lahat ng negosyo. Hinila siya ni Lawrence sa passenger side na sasakyan at biroksan ng pinto. Get in. Wala na tayong araw para mag-away, Valerie. Huminga si Valerie na malalim. Sumakay sa kotse habang tinapo ng itim na velvet box sa likod ng upuan. At bago palang isarang pinto, hinilagan ni Lawrence ito ng mariin sa labi. Namiss talaga kita. Sumakay na rin ito sa driver seat at pinaandar na ang sasakyan. It was a good five minutes of silence na binasag ni Valerie ang katahimikan. Ihatid mo na lang ko pa uwi. I promise to be at home for dinner. Napatingin si Lawrence sa kanya. Sabi ko, libre ko ng hapunan, di ba? I have something to discuss with my parents and mom told me to go home tonight. Pagsisinungaling niya. Ano mga bagay? Hindi ba dapat ang trabaho sa opisina bilang pinag-uusapan at di sa bahay? Ipinagkasundo nila ako sa anak mga kaibigan ng pamilya. Hinintay niya ang sagot nito. Lumipas ang sampung segundo wala and I just want to discuss a few things with them bago ko pumayag. My parents are a big reliever of Dick's marriages. After all, they're a product of one. Tumango lang si Lawrence. Fine. Iyahatid kita pa uwi. Habang ganto tayo, hindi ko iniisip at dapat pa tayo magkita ng panahim ngayon. I mean, since I might start dating the guy they're planning to marry me off to, we should at least keep an line na natin at manatiling magkaibigan lang. We're friends. Seryosong sabi pa ni Valerie. Alam mo ang ibig kong sabihin, Lawrence? Hindi na ulit to sumagot. 
Iwala mo lang itong pakialam sa mga sinasabi niya. She was so stupid the last eight years to think that she means something for him. Ibinaba siya ni Lawrence harap ng kanilang gate at binilisan ng pag-alis sa parang walang nangyari. And as she watched him speed away, doon lang ni Valerie pinakawalan ang duhang kanina pang pinibigil. She was hoping for something more from him. She was hoping for him to say no, to interrupt her and tell her that no one else could marry her but him. Ngunit si Lawrence napakatahimik at walang pakialam. Bakit late ka na? Ngayon ka lang dumating? Lawrence's friend Gael smiled na biglang dumating siya sa VIP table. He quickly agreed dahil wala rin naman siyang gagawin tonight. Archie was already there. Nagkibipalikat lang si Lawrence. Kailangan ipagmaneho ko pa uwi ang isang kaibigan. Who? Tanong ni Archie. Si Archie ang kapatid na babaeng kakahatid lang niya pa uwi. Nothing important. Let's celebrate now that I'm here. So sino ang target mo ngayon, Gael? Mas maganda ba mga babae sa US? He said and did a quick bump of the women around them in that bar. Same. Same? Baka naman kasi natikman mo ng halos lahat nila at nagsawa ka na. Kansaw pa ni Archie sa kaibigan. Hindi mahirap paniwalaan yun. Pagsang ay ni Lawrence. Kamusta ang huling dalawang taon ng pakipag-hookup sa US? Ang kanyang isip palagang umaago sa kung saan. Nagsimula magsalita si Gail tungkol sa kanyang ama, ang dakilang si Gerald Alegre at kung gano'n siya kaperfecto. Pero di ba sep sister niya daddy ang mama mo na naging sila? So I guess it's not that perfect after all. Pinalago ng tatay ko ang namin tremendously and all while we're seeing with family. I have a feeling may gusto na silang ipakasal sa akin sometime soon. Gael revealed. Oo, kapatid ko. At sila man siya ni Lawrence. Si Valerie bang tinutukoy niya? Narinig kong kausap ng tatay ko ang tatay mo. Valerie? Gulat na tanong ni Gael. What? Biglang galit na tanong ni Lawrence. I just heard them. Can't confirm yet but who am I to judge? My best friend will be my brother-in-law. At talo pa nag-init ang duo ni Lawrence. It was already 2am pero katatapos sa mag-edit ni Valerie ng press release article nila. It took her almost 4 hours to polish an article na mabilis lang dapat. Talagang gulo na talagang isip niya. She was ready to sleep na marinig na may mga kaluskos na nanggagaling sa balkonahin ng kwarto niya. The balcony door was covered with white curtains but it was translucent enough to show a human figure climbing up and walking towards the balcony door. Naalarma siya and was about to call for help nang kumatok at nagsalitang lalaki. Valerie! Tawag ni Lawrence sa kanya. Oh no! She has to keep him quiet. Baka mananito ng mga magulang niya. She opened her balcony door immediately and saw a drunk Lawrence in front of her. Anong ginagawa mo rito? Is it true? Galit na tanong nito. Ang suot itong long sleeve from the office ay naka-unbutton na ngayon, revealing a well-sculpted chest. What? Untag niya rito at sinundan to sa loob. Kayo ni Gael. Ang kanyang matay nagliliyab na parang apoy ngayon. Paano nalaman nito? I was out with your brother and Gael tonight. Paliwanag pa ni Lawrence. Marahil alam na ni Gael at sinabi niya sa kanila. Napagtanto ni Valerie. Oo, totoo. At pumayag ka dito? Well, hindi pa ako sumasangayon sa anong bagay. Nagpapasya pa ako. Siya bang sinasabi mong lalaki kanina? Tanong ni Lawrence. Yes, it was Gael. It is an idea my mom just offered since wala naman daw akong boyfriend at wala rin daw girlfriend si Gael. Tumawa lang si Lawrence. Ano ba? Baka marinig ka na mama at papa. Just leave. If manggugulo ka lang dito. Ngayon, tinataboy mo na ako. So, ito na ha. I think you have finally decided. Nagibit balikat na lang si Lawrence at tumingin sa katawan niya. Nakalimutan ni Valerie na nakasot lang siya ng manipis na pares ng sleeveless at shorts na black silk pajama combo. Sa palagay ko, ang walang taon ay sapat na para matapos na. Komento ni Lawrence. Nasaktan si Valerie sa sinabi nito. I really enjoyed you. Sana ganoon din ang mararamdaman ni Kael. Kung hindi, you're welcome to come to my bed anytime. At sinampal ni Valerie ito bigla. That's a low blow, Lawrence. Too low. He just smirked at hinila ang kanilang braso niya. What would you think kapag nalaman niya tungkol sa atin at sa mga ginawa natin the last few years? I guess you wouldn't be the perfect Valerie Blanco anymore. Huwag kang maglalakas doob. Gumiti lang si Lawrence. Natatakot, ha? Paano mga magulang mo? Sigurado ako magugulat din sila. Saan ka pupunta nito? Tiring na ni Lawrence siya sa mata. Valerie, ako lang nakakalam sa totoong ikaw. Ang alam ko lang, hindi ka lang sweet na babae. Hindi niya ito palapit. Pinaligiran ng malalaking kamay ang bewang nito. She instantly felt his heart on through his pants. Pilit si Valerie kumawala but his hold on her was firm. Hindi niya malas ang pagkakayakap ito sa bewang niya. Bitiwan mo ako, Lawrence. Tell me, gusto mo ba talagang makasama si Kael? Hindi ni Valerie alam. Dalawang taon na niyang hindi nakikita ang kaibigan niyang yun at higit sa lamang kapatid kaysa ano pa man. 
Ngunit kung ang nagsama ni Nagael ay nangangahulugan na ang pagpapalaya sa kanyang sarili mula sa lihim na pag-set up ng relasyon nakakasakit lamang sa kanya. Kung gayon sa lahat ng paraan, handa siyang gawin to. Yes, tipid na sagot ni Valerie. Bigyan mo lang ako ng isang gabi at iiwan kitang payapa sa buhay mong pagpapanggap. Alok ni Lawrence, wala ka marinig mula sa akin. Bumaba ang labi nito sa leg niya. Bumaba ang mga kamay sa piski niya. Pirindot at sinapo, hinila palapit sa kanya. Na magsimulang humalik ang labi ni Lawrence sa kanyang balat, alam na ni Valerie, hindi yan na ito mapipigilan. Palaging tinatanggap ng kanyang katawan ng mga halik at hawak nito. Ang walong taong palihem na pagkikita nila, kailangan matapos na ngayong gabi. Ito na sanang huling gabi, kaya nangyari. Wake up! Pukaw ni Valerie sa binatang katabi sa kama ngayon. Isang malaking pagkakamali ang kagabi. Ininsulto siya nito pero binigyan pa rin ito ng access. Hindi siya makapaniwala sa sarili niya. Valerie slapped his shoulder even harder para magising to. Hey babe! Nakangiting bati ni Lawrence ang imulat ang mga mata. Mabilis ito ngunit banayan. She lost her train of thoughts for a minute there before mabilis niyang nakarecover. Pinilit niyang tanggalin muli ang mabigat itong braso sa bewang niya. I think you should go home. Marami pa akong gagawin ngayong araw at may party pa mamayang hapon. I have to finish work early today. Nakakunot ang noong tulitian lang sa Lawrence. But it's a weekend, Valerie. Why are you working? Hindi tulad na iba may mga taong umaasa sa akin para sa pagkain at tinahan. Mariin na sagot ni Valerie. Napabuntungan niya lang si Lawrence at tumayos na ng upo. Pwede mo ba akong ipagtimpla ng kape? Ano ba? Nasa baba si na mama. Pagdadahilan ni Valerie. You can just bring coffee and breakfast here and we can eat together. Can I quick come by my condo for a bath and then we can meet, Lawrence? I just need the change of clothes. Seryosong tawag ni Valerie. Wala na mapaglarong lalaking. Nakita niya ilang segundo na nakalipas. Napagkasan doon nilang maghiwali ng landas. Hindi mababago yun ang pagtulog kasama isa't isa. This, it's a mistake. I know I've allowed this for, to go for so long but it can't happen again. Deklaran niya. Nakatayo siya ngayon sa side ng kama. Trying her best to look him in the eye. Even though deep inside, hindi niya sigurado kung kaya niyang panindihan ang mga sinasabi niya. I'll give you a week. I'll let you to know, Gael. He stood up and got his shirt and pants on the floor bago naglakad palabas ng balcony. I don't need a week. This is not a test and I'm wrong. I'm really ending this. Whatever setup this is between us, hindi ko na kaya. She said and looked down. Hindi ni Lawrence nakita mga luhang gustong kumawala sa kanyang mga mata. Hindi mo kilala si Gael. He may be your friend but he treats girls way worse than me. You think he's capable of marriage and loyalty? Hindi makapaniwalang tanong ni Lawrence. Are you? Pagbabalik ka ng tanong sa binata. Lawrence was stoned. Wala kang karapatang pagsabihin ako sa dapat kong gawin o hindi gawin. This is my life and I don't need you in it anymore. Tumango lang si Lawrence. Wala pa rin emosyon. We will see about that, Valerie. Palagi kang bumabalik at tumatak mo papunta sa akin. Sweetheart, More than you know, dahil alam mong walang ibang makakapag-protect sa iyo, tulad ang ginagawa ko. Yun lamang at umalis na ito. He climbed down her balcony palabas sa back fence ng bahay nila at mabilis siyang nawala gaya ng pagpasok niya kahapon. Habang si Valerie na iwang malayang umiiyak ngayon, napagtanto niyang hindi niya kailangan protektahan siya. Ang kailangan niya kay Lawrence ay pagmamahal. Gusto niyang mahilin siya nito sa bawat kahulugan ng salita. Napapadala siya ata mga regalo at bulaklak na padala dito sa office. Is it because Galen's already courting you, Iha? Sarita asa makitang may isang bungkos ng red roses ngayon sa desk ni Valerie. Valerie just looked up at her mother habang nagtatype sa laptop nito. No, ma. It's just a thank you gift from a friend. A thank you gift after another round of make love last night? Ang tanga-tanga kasi talaga niya eh. What a sweet gesture. Then, anyway, Iha, darating ang makeup artist at hairstylist natin sa bahay ng 4pm. Be home by then. Hindi ka na dapat nagtrabaho today. You could have just gotten your beauty sleep. Ang laki ng eye bags mo, oh. Para napuyat ka kagabi. Damn, Lawrence. Napuyat siya dahil nito. At tumiyak pa siya nitong umaga dahil rin nito. She really must get rid of him. I will be home by 4pm, ma. Don't worry. May daraanan lang ako sa supermarket. Kinulang ng noodle sa toothpaste yung kiss na pinapadala ng mga binagyo sa Mindanao. Bakit hindi mo nilang ipagawa sa I want to do it, ma. She needs to get busy today or else mababaliw siya sa kakaisip at taong ayaw niyang makita. And just then, someone knocked on her office door and before she could answer ay nagbukas din to. Lawrence? Gulat na bati ng mama niya sa binatang papasok pa lang. Tita, you look so pretty in that dress. Iting bati naman ni Lawrence sa mama, ni Valerie, at niyakap to na mabinis. Salamat, iho. 
Nabili ko to sa collection ng mama mo. Well, my mom does indeed make the best collections for the best women. Sagot naman ni Lawrence. Ang sweet mo naman, iho. Why are you here? Malamig na tanong ni Valerie sa binata, not even greeting him. Nakikita kong natanggap pong bulaklak na pinadala ko. Sabi ni Lawrence, Yeah, I got them. No need to send thank you gifts next time. She said trying to save herself from endless questioning of her mother. Why? I know you love roses. Ganun diba, tita? Hindi ko lang alam na nakikita pala kayo recently, iho. I just thought you were so busy with your trainings and with running One Philippine Air. Yeah, we were working on the same projects together. Sagot ni Lawrence. I love working with her. She seems so flexible. At kumindat si Lawrence sa direksyon niya. Her jaw almost dropped at his innuendo. Talaga bang gusto nitong ibuking sila sa mismong harapan ng mama niya? I am helping him in an outreach event of their airlines. Mabilis na aga pa ni Valerie sa usapan. Ah, ganun ba? Magaling. Invite mo ko minsan, iho, para may pakilala din kita sa ilang connections. I will, tita. For now, I can just talk to her in private. May kukonsult ng sana ako. Sure, iho. Kita lang tayo mamaya sa Allegri Mansion. Pupunta ka, ha? Opo, tita. Pupunta po ako. Magkita tayo. Mabilas ni Valerie ang hinalikan ng kanyang ina sa pisngi. See you later. Paalam ng mama niya before leaving them alone. Anong consulting ang kailangan mo? Galit na tanong ni Valerie. Dito as she stood up to face him. Pero matangkad pa rin si Lawrence kaya madali siya nitong nahawakan. Tumabaya sa kanya si Lawrence at mahigpit na hinawakan ang kanyang bewang. I just need to consult about this. Anit at lalong delikit ang katawan sa kanya. She was quick to step up. Baro nakasunod to sa kanya. Bastos! She screamed. Gusto mo noon kapag ginagawa ko yan. Sabi ni Lawrence at gumiti ng mapait. Anyway, I'm just here to ask if you want a ride later. I can pick you up and we can go to KLs together. I have a car. Marami pa akong gagawin kaya umalis ka na. I will pick you up later at 6pm. Sabi ko sa'yo. Pero pinahinimag na lang ni Lawrence siya ng halik. At nang maglapat ang kanilang mga labi, sumabog na lang ang spark. Sarap ni Valerie at bigla naman siyang nawala ng kontrol sa kanyang katawan. Maingat na siya nitong pinaupo sa kanyang mesa habang ang mga kamay nito na pumasok sa kanyang loob ay pang itaas o pang ganap na sa lohay ng kanyang mga dibdib. Lalong umalim ang kanilang halikan at sa opisina ni Valerie hindi niya magawang tumanggi. Muli siyang nagpaangkin kay Lawrence. I'll pick you up later. Going to the party and after the party, I booked up at the master suite in Shang. At walang paalam, umalis na lang si Lawrence. Anong kalukuhan yun? Nasabi ni Valerie sa sarili. Valerie, nasa baba si Lawrence, susunduin ka raw niya? Seryosong tarong ng dandy Valerie sa kanya. Raymond Blanco is a powerful businessman, but when it comes to her, he becomes a hilarious, funny dad. Pero may mga araw na extra productive to sa kanya, lalo na kapag nakikita nitong may mga lalaking umaaligid sa kanya. But Lawrence should be an exception. He is a childhood friend of hers at anak din to ng matalik niyang kaibigan, si Ryan Acero. Katabi ni Valerie ngayon sa dresser ang mama niya, habang inaayos ang makeup nilang dalawa. She was in a black long gown hugging her body perfectly. She may not have the boobs pero shapely naman ang balakang niya. Her body was more of a model type. She may not have the boobs, slim but with the right amount of curves to not make it look so thin. Talaga? Tarong din ang mama niya. Binisita ka rin niya kanina sa opasina mo anak, hindi ba? Is he making a move on you, Valerie? Tarong ng papa naman niya. If only. No ma, pa, I just... I finished that project with him from One Philippine Air. He is just returning the favor. He wants to also talk me up with Gael. I feel so awkward talking to him after so long. Two years din kaming di nakita ni Gael. At least Lawrence can help me warm up to him. She answered, still continuing the lie on that project. Well, Gael seems to be down to earth. I'm sure you'll both get along well. Sagot naman ng mama niya. Doesn't it look weird na dating kayo magkasama sa bahay ng maaring fiancé mo sa hinaharap? His dad suddenly asked. He just found a good friend, dad. If I don't know the kid, I would think he lies like you. At binabakunan ka niya ngayon. But since he is your friend and also Gael's, then I would give him the benefit of the doubt. His dad was about to leave the room nang bumasok naman si Archie sa kwarto. Why is that asshole waiting for you downstairs? Para nagdududang tanong ni Archie. Isn't he your best friend for you to be calling him asshole? Talong naman ng mama niya. Well, he is an asshole to me kung pinupormahan ka niya. Valerie? His brother answered, being protective this time. Gael should be the one you are castigating, Archie, not Lawrence. Sing it ng mama niya. I'm fine with Gael, ma. I just don't tolerate dudes stealing someone else's girl. Sagot ni Archie. I am not Gael's girl. Ines na deklara ni Valerie. 
I haven't even said yes to this whole scheme yet. So please just leave me be. I will deal with Lawrence later and stop asking questions, okay? Napuno na si Valerie. She has to deal with Lawrence once and for all. You look so hot in that dress. I just want to skip this party and drive to our suite now. Lawrence whispered na makapark sila ngayon sa loob ng mansa ng mga alegre. Or we can go quickly to the hidden part of the garden. Remember when we did things here? Lawrence, tara na. They are probably waiting for me already. Gael might also be looking for me. Nakita ni Valerie kung paano nagbago ang ekspresyon nito. Trust me, he isn't what... What makes you say that? He knows about this arrangement already but I'm sure he did not go home last night after we celebrated his homecoming. What are you suggesting? He might have hooked up with God knows who. Kakawi lang niya ng Pilipinas. Who knows what type of woman he must have bedded last night. She just chose not to answer. Funny though, hearing Gael sleep with someone else does not ignite any feelings in her. She just doesn't care. That's the kind of guy you're marrying? Hindi makapaniwalang tanong ni Lauren sa kanya. You know what? You shouldn't give a damn, okay? He sleeps with anyone. I bet he can even sleep with a hooker. He's my best friend but I won't ever let any sister or girlfriend to get anywhere near him. I am not sure why Archie is tolerating this. Hindi si Gael tama para sa'yo. Kung gayon, sino? Nagkibit balikat na si Lawrence. I don't know. Ang alam ko, hindi kita papakawalan sa paningin ko. Hanggat di ko alam na pupunta ka sa tamang lalaki. Ang tagal na nating magkaibigan. That's the best kaya kong gawin. Wika ni Lawrence. Huminga lang si Valerie ng malalim para kontrolin ng emosyon. Hindi naman masakit sa kanyang posibilidad na makatulog si Gail sa isang kabit. Ngunit ang isang simpleng pagila si Lawrence sa pagtawag sa kanyang kaibigan ay nagdudulot ng labis ang kalukutan sa kanyang puso. We better go inside. Wika ni Valerie bago pinaksan ang gilid ng pinto at lumabas bago pa makita ni Lawrence ang ilang luhang dumadali sa kanyang pisngi. Nadata ni Lawrence sa kanyang mga kaibigan na sina Archie at Gael na komportable na kapo sa isang mesa sa tabi ng pool area kung saan naroon ng party. Ito ay mga kilala at mga kaibigan lamang ng pamilya at ng pamilya Alegre. Siyempre, pati mga magulang niya nandoon. Bakit hinahanap ka sa amin ni Tito kagabi? Where did you go? Takang-takang talong ni Archie kay Gael. Tiring ng Lawrence ang kanyang isang kaibigan. Wala akong maalala pero nagising ako sa isang hotel. Walang pakialam na sa mimsim si Gael sa kanyang wine glass. Sinasabi na nga ba niya? This guy is about to marry a beautiful woman. In fact, the most beautiful woman in the world. At pagkatapos makikipag-make love to sa mga random na babae sa Pilipinas? Hotel? May kasama? Tanong ni Lawrence sa lalo pa nagsumisikyap. Umiling si Gael. Wala ko nakita ang kasama pagising ko kaya baka dahil sa pagkarasing ko kaya nag-check-in ako sa isang hotel. Oh, he doubted. It was Gael. Of course, his friend was with someone last night. Bago siya umuwi kagabi nakita niya may kausap tong babae sa labas ng bar na pinag-inuman nila. Ngunit biglang naputa lang kanyang pag-iisip nang sumama sa kanila si Valerie sa mesa. And she was wearing that low neckline long gown to just make her look like a supermodel off the runway. Valerie! Bati ni Lawrence sa kanya. Sabay alok ng upuan sa tabi niya. Hi guys! Magilo niyang bati pabalik. Nakita ni Lawrence na inlock din na Gail ang bakanting upuan sa tabi niya. Sandaling pag-aaninlangan sa mukha ni Valerie. Ngulit kinuha niyang upuan sa tabi ni Gail. Damn it! Simpleng mura ni Lawrence sa isipan. He saw how Gail looked at her as if he was assessing. Gusto niyang batukan ng kaibigan. He feels like Gael doesn't have any right to assess her dahil kahit anong gawin niya, he will never be good enough for someone like Valerie. Walang sino man na maaaring maging sapat para kay Valerie. Hey, how are you? Panimulang bati ni Gael sa dalaga. Lame way to start a conversation, sabi ni Lauren sa isipan niya. I'm good, trying to keep myself busy. I'm inviting you all to a charity auction ball next month. Kailangan ko makalikom ng pera para sa ilang ethnic kontrabo sa Mindanao. Masayang kwento ni Valerie. Does she ever stop working? Palagi na lang nagtatrabaho para sa kabubuti ng ibang tao. Valerie is a saint in his eyes. That's why no man could ever be good enough for her, even himself. Wow, ang galing! Sagot ni Gael. Darating kami. Thank you. How was US? May chat lag ka pa ba? Tanong ni Valerie kay Gael. Ang buong atensyon niya. At inis na inis si Lawrence. Shine na katingin lang kay Gael. Jet lag? None. Hangover? Yes. Mabilis ang sagot ni Gael. Wala silang magandang idudulot sa buhay mo. Biro ni Valerie. Umikot na ang mata ni Arjun na nasa tabi niya. Kamusta ka? Any boyfriends? Biglang pagsiyasat ni Gael. Valerie quickly glanced at him. Hindi siya sigurado kung bakit. Why did you look at him? Pero madali lang. Binalik niya ang atensyon kay Gael. Wala naman. Balita ko inaisa tayo ng mga papa natin. Ikaw ba alam mo? Diret siya ang tanong ni Gael. 
Naginit bigla ang dugo ni Lawrence. Hindi siya makapaniwalang makahakilos ng ganda si Gael. Walang pagtatangka mula sa kanyang kaibiganin muna siya. I heard but we are already friends anyway. What is there to lose? Sumagot siya. Gusto na niyang hilayin pabalik ng kotse siya sa Valerie. Is she really flirting back at him? This is so painful to watch. Right. Nakangiting sagot ni Gael. I'll just get us some drink and leave you alone. Tumayo ito at iniwan sila sa table. Are you okay bro? Tanong ni Archie nakatingin sa kamay ni Lawrence. Ang kanyang kamaoy nakabisil ng mahigpit sa kanyang kandungan. Sinubukan niya magpahinga at tumingin kay Valerie. Sa tingin mo, ang pakikipag-flirt sa kanya'y makakatulong na mapanatili ang kanyang interes? Anong ibig mong sabihin? Takang tanong ni Valerie. Gusto mo talagang isipin niya na ganun kakadaling makuha. Medyo galit na si Lawrence ngayon. Napatingin ulit si Archie sa kanya. Why do you care? My sister is about to marry him soon anyway. Talaga? Okay ka lang na makita siyang kasal sa isang man whore? Hamon ni Lawrence kay Archie. Stop being a hypocrite. Manhor's tying tatlo, but I think Gael knows how to be loyal when it comes to it. Kung hindi, mapipilitan akong patayin siya para sa kapatid ko. Anyway, nagugutom na ako. Kukuha lang ako ng makakain. At tumayo si Valerie para pumunta sa buffet table. You're acting like a bitter ex, sabi niya. Pero hindi mo ako ex, deklara niya. So what if I flirt back? He is my fiancé sooner or later. May kasama siyang natulog kagabi. Wika ni Lawrence. Nagkibit balikat si Valerie. I also slept with someone else last night, di ba? So I think quits lang kami ni Gael, but that won't ever happen again. She stood up and was about to leave the table, nang hilaan ito ni Lawrence. Anong ginagawa mo? Saan tayo pupunta? Para nahimik ni Valerie ang tanong. Habang kinakaladkad siya nito para cool siya at composed para di ba alerto mga tao sa paligid. Valerie just followed Lawrence's lead. Nakalabas na naman siya at napasok ulit sa kotse nito. He was driving like a madman. Tahan-tahan, sabi niya. Lawrence, I said, slow down. I'm getting scared. Ulit ni Valerie. Lawrence quickly glanced at her at binigaran nitong pagpapatakbo ng kotse. He grabbed her left and hand and intertwined it with his. I'm sorry, Valerie. Mahinang bulong ni Lawrence at muling tinan natin siya sa daan. What has gotten into you? Tanong ga, now looking at the highway too. Hindi man lang pa, nakakalahati ang party. Baka hanapin ako ni Mama. Pupunta tayo sa sweet na nabuk ko. Bigla siya napatingin dito. I can't stay tonight, Lawrence. I told you. Hindi na pwedeng maulit. Magpapahinga lang tayo at matutulog. She just laughed. Nagpapatawa ka ba? Para nagbibiru ba ang mukha ko? Napatingin sa kanya si Valerie at seryoso nga siya. Kung ayaw mo matulog, respetuhin ko yan. Pero di ako pwedeng umupo na lang dito at hayaan ka makasama si Gael. Hindi siyang tamang lalaki para sa'yo. I knew it. Inis na tinitigan ni Valerie ang katabing binata. Why is he meddling so much in her life? Pero wala naman itong balak na seryosoy na namamagitan sa kanilang dalawa. She could see them entering the parking lot of Shang. Mabilis siyang binawi ang kami mula rito. Mabilis na nakapark at bumaba ka agad. Para pagbuksan siya ng pinto. You don't need to check us in here. I am not staying with you tonight. Pero parang wala itong narinig. He just grabbed her right arm at hinila siya papunta ng elevator. Pagdating sa kwarto nag order ng room service dinner si Lawrence. Hindi sila nakakain sa party dahil nila agad siya nito, paalis. I can only stay until 10pm. Hahanapin ako nila mama by then. I can tell Archie that you're with me. Pero mapagtakpan ka niya sa mga magulang mo. Baliw ka kung iniisip mong tutulungan ka ng kapatid ko. Then, what should we do? I have the keys to this room and I assure you, Valerie. Kahit anong sipat iyo mo, hindi kita palalabasan ngayong gabi. Baliw ka talaga, komenta ni Valerie. Nagsimulang magtanggal ng coat, bow tie at magambata ng polo si Lawrence. He also removed his shoes and changed into hotel slippers. She dialed her best friend's number para makipagkonsaba dito. Margo has always known that was up between them, kaya ito lang makakatulong sa kanila. Hi Margo! Bati ni Valerie sa matalik na kaibigan. Hoy babae, anong meron? Nasaan ka? Nasa kondo ko. Nag-workout ako ngayon. Ano bang meron sa'yo? Favor, pwede bang ipaalam mo ako kay na mommy na mag over tayo tonight? I'm just... Kasama mo si Lawrence? Hula ni Marco. Well, it was a spur of the moment. Cut it out, Valerie. Hanggang kailan ka ba magpapaloko sa lalaking yan? Is he there? Pwede bang speaker mo toad mong phone mo? Margo, please, this will be the last. I promise after this, I'll get things straight out, okay? Isa pa, hindi na tayo mga bata. We're 26, for goodness sake, Valerie. Hindi na nagsislip over mga 26 years old. God, she exasperately said. Sorry, Margo, wala na talaga ako maisip eh. Fine. Ako nang bahala kina tita. Ikaw na magsabi sa nila lumabas tayo for an emergency and might be late. I will back you up in case tita Sari messages me. 
Salamat, Margo. Don't thank me. Iwan mong gagong yan. Bye. And the line went dead. Nakatingin ngayon sa kanya si Lawrence habang komportable na kaupo sa sofa. She'll cover for us, but this is the last time, Lawrence. She sat on the bed and looked around the grand suite. Because she felt uncomfortable, hinuban niya ang sapatos. Matutulog lang tayo't mag-uusap. Tumango si Lawrence bago tumayot naglakad palapit sa kanya. Ano? Maingat na tanong ni Valerie habang nakatingin sa lalaking nakatayo sa harap niya. Let me unzip your dress. You look so uncomfortable. I'll be fine. I can sleep in this. You're kidding me, right? I'm not gonna pounce on you just because you're in your underwear. Tilitigan siya nito na masama. Well, medyo hindi komportable ang damit kasi it was so fitted. Fine. She resigned at tumayo ng patalikod dito. Naramdaman ni Valerie ang unti-unti nitong nabubuksan ang zipper ng kanyang damit habang ang dalili dumadampi sa kanyang balat. Muli siyang humarap sa kanya habang nakatas ang kanyang gown. Pwede bang umikot ka? I'll just take this off and go under the sheets. Lawrence just smirked. You're really kidding me, ha? Pero sumunod pa rin to at tumalikod. Mabilis siyang tinanggal ang gown at tinawakan ng mga kumot. Para kapapangal ang sarili. Dahil nakastick on para lang na at tong siya. Pwede ka nang tumalikod. Sabi ni Valerie pagtapos itago ang sarili sa ilalim ng kumot. Lumapit si Lawrence. Umupo sa tabi ng kama niya. Sinubukan umikot para maglagay ng espasya sa pagitan nila. Ang pagkasama nila ng ganto hindi ko perdabi sa dalaga. Gusto ko lang makipag-usap, Valerie. Palimula ni Lawrence. Alright. Tipid na sagot ang dalaga. Gael is a close friend of mine. I know you know that. If ever he get married, I get to be the best man. So I know him better than you. I know him since we grew up together. Hindi ka maging masaya sa kanya dahil hindi siya para sa'yo. Tinitigan ni Valerie si Lawrence matapos sa madamdaming pain nito. Did she even ask for his opinion? Valerie, you have such a golden heart. Gael does not care about anyone but himself and how to please his goddamn dad. He is insecure and is willing to do everything to get his dad's approval. You will never be a priority. He will never prioritize anything else than himself. Kaya mo ba talaga makisama sa lalaking ganyan? Tingnan mo. Hindi pa bang may formal na tanggap ang isa't isa. Ideya lang yun ng aming mga magulang. Pero sa tingin mo, parang patay na patay na si Gael sa'yo. Nagsalubong ang mga kailan ni Lawrence. Kung gusto ka ng papa ni Gael bilang fiancé niya, Sigurado kong hahabunin ka niya at kagoy ng mga bagay-bagay sa'yo. Pero hindi dahil gusto ka niya o mahal ka niya. Gusto lang niya ng approval ng parents niya. Paano kung okay lang sa akin yun? Anong ibig mong sabihin, Valerie? Paano ko naghahanap lang din ako ng partner at sense of security? Talaga? So okay ka lang na ginagamit ka lang? Ano sa tingin mong nangyari sa pagitan natin noong nakarang walong taon? Hindi kita ginamit. Sambit ni Lawrence pabalik. I cared about you, Valerie. I'm sorry kung hindi pa sapat ang nasabi ko at ito rin ang dahilan kung bakit ako nakikailam sa desisyon mong to. Ayoko matapos ka sa taong pagsisihan mo, pero hindi ko hinihingi ang opinion mo. I am your friend, a close one, and this is my job to help you make good decisions. Punong-puno si Valerie sa pakikialam ni Lauren sa buhay niya ngayon. Sa totoo lang, gusto ko ng totoong relasyon ngayon. At kung gusto ko ng isa, ako naghahanap ako ng isa, ikaw ang huling taong hihingan ko ng opinion. Alam mo kung bakit? Dali ka pa nagkaroon ng totoong relasyon. Hindi mo alam paano alagaan ang isang tao at mamuhunan sa isang tao. Hindi mo alam paano magmahal o mangako. Kaya patawarin mo kung ulit gagawa ko ng mga bagay na tingin ko sa pagkakataon to. Wika ni Valerie. Mukhang naubusan na ito ng argumento para ipatupas sa kanya. And I mean it. Ito na ang huling best na makakasama kita. At sa tamang oras, dumating ang kanilang pagkain o pumatakpan ang kanilang usapan. Limang taon nang na nakakalipas. It was Valerie's graduation party. Nasa isang hotel ballroom sila but Valerie was already tired kaya tumas siya sa private room niya para sa gabing yun. Her parents also booked in the hotel for that night but in a bigger suite. It was past one in the morning at napagod siya sa pakikiwenduhan sa mga kaibigan. Congratulating her for graduating with high honors and also for doing some memorable charitable projects for the Blanca Foundation on the side. Siya'y dapat nasa cloud nine mula sa lahat ng papuri pero wala nag-iisang tao gusto niya makasama ng araw na yun. Lawrence was in Singapore. Tinatrain ito ng papa niya to be the CEO ng airline sila. She gets it. Sino nga ba siya para pag-aksay nito ng oras? She is just his body in bed. Kailangan ba nito umatin ng graduation party niya? Nakapagpalit na siya ng pantulog. Ready to sleep na makarinig siya ng katok sa labas. Did I order room service? Tanong ni Valerie sa sarili. Tumayo siya at naglakad papunta sa pinto at sumilip sa pimp hall. Nanlaki ang mata na makita si Lauren sa labas. May hawak na bouquet of flowers. Agad niyang binuksan ng pinto. Niyakap siya na mahigpit. Wow, you really did miss me. 
masayang bati ng binata sa kanya. She pulled him inside bago pa may iba makakita sa kanila sa hallway. How did you get back here? Akala ko hanggang next week ka pa doon. Pumasok si Lauren sa loob ng kwarto at tumupo sa napakalaking kama ng dalaga. Ibinigay ang bukay na hawak niya. Good thing there was a flower shop near the airport. Anyway, I took a 9pm flight pero babalik din ako bukas ng ubaga. We're going to buy more planes tomorrow for a new fleet at Dad wants. Oh, so dito ka lang mamayang gabi? Tanong ni Valerie habang inamoy ang mga rosa sa harapan niya. I'll be here till 7am. So we only have 6 hours. Ano bang tinatayo-tayo mo dyan? Anong ibig mong sabihin? Tumayo siya, tinila siya sa kama. Hindi ako lumipad dito ng biglaan para nang makita kang nakapadyama. Ibinagsak ang bukay sa kabilang gilid ng kama. Nagsimulang umakbang ang kamay pababa sa kanyang daing. Patungo sa kanyang dibdib. Pagod ako pagkatapos ng araw na to. Katwina ni Valerie. Hindi ba pwedeng magyakap na lang tayo? Tumingin si Lauren sa kanyang di makapaniwala. Ako din pagod pero lumipad ako dito para lang sa'yo. O make love lang? Yun ang namabas sa salita kay Valerie. Tuminto si Lawrence sa tumingin sa kanya. May problema ba? Mukha si Lawrence sasaktan sa sinabi niya at tumanggi. At sa nakikita niya mukha nasasaktan ng binata, parang wala siya ibang magawa kundi ibigay ang gusto nito. Ang mga matang yun ang kahinaan niya. Hindi ni Valerie magawang tumanggi kay Lawrence. Kaya umupo siya timakap sa kanya at binigyan to ng halik na kaya niya. Sinimulan niyang tanggarin ng butones ng shirt nito at i-unzip ang pantalo nito. Sa ngayon wala na siyang pakailam. Gusto man ito na make love mula sa kanya o higit pa. Sa totoo lang, wala siyang pakailang basta kasama na ito. Sino nakakaalam? Siguro a year or two from now, hihilingin siya nito maging girlfriend. Si Valerie abala sa pagpapadala ng mga imbitasyon para sa isang charity ball ng kanyang inaayos para sa mga etikong tribo sa Mindanao. Sa loob ng dalawang linggo, gaganapin na iyon ang pag-iimbita na ilan sa pinakamayayamang tao sa lipunan. She needs as much donations as she can. Plano ni Valerie na magtayo ng housing project sa area ng mga ethnic tribes para maprotekta ng mga ito sa mga NPA na umaagaw ng lupain nila. Can I come in? You look so busy. Biglang tanong na isang bisita. Haba na kasilip sa kanyang kalahating bukas sa pinto. She was shocked to find Gael in her office kaya napatayo siya to welcome him. Come in. What a surprise. Hindi ko alam daraan ka dito. Pumasok si Gael sa loob at sinanyasan siya nitong maupo sa meeting table sa tapat mismo ng malaking desk niya. Umupo siya sa headchair doon habang nasa kanan siya, si Gael. It is nice seeing you again. Ngayon na ako nakabisita. I was so swamped with sudden work. I'm here dahil may kinonsulta ako kay Archie so I decided to see you too. Oh, magaling si Archie sa field niya. Yup, meron akong construction project na ginagawa and I just asked for his opinion. Anyway, I wasn't able to talk to him much during the party weeks ago. Nawala na lang kay ni Lawrence bigla. He commented, hinting at something. I was tired. I had a headache so I left. Pagdadahilan ni Valerie. Your mom said may emergency daw kaya umalis ka kaagad. Oops, maling kasi nungalingan. Yeah, ang sakit sa ulo. Malaking emergency ang migraine ko. Tumangutong ko si Gael. Anyway, I would like to ask you out on a date this weekend. And I also want to be your date for the upcoming charity ball. Wow, masyado kang forward. Hindi ko inaasahan yun. At gumiti siya. Valerie, we're friends for so long. I think I know you but not well enough for us to marry. So I'm proposed that we make effort at least to get to know each other more. Ngumiti si Valerie. Ano sa tingin mo? Naalala niyang bigla mga sinabi ni Lauren sa kanya nung muli sila nakita that Gael is only keen about her if his father wants to be his fiancé. So Gael won't be doing this for love but to please his father. Oo, gugustuhin ko yon. Tugon niya. Sa kabila ng pag-aalilangan nung una, Great, that sounds nice. But before we try to get to know each other more, may tanong lang ako. Bigla si Gael naging seryoso. Oo, kayo ba ni Lawrence? Tanong ni Gael. Ah, uh, hindi kami. Sigurado ka ba? Tumango siya. Bakit man natanong? Ah, uh, wala lang. Nagtataka lang ako kung bakit nawala kayo ng sabay last time during the party. Plus, he seemed to be protective of you. Lalo nang nalaman niya na pinagkasundo tayo ng mga magulang natin. He seemed pleased about it. Well, it's been like a brother. He's always at home with Kuya Archie, so I think gusto niya lang makinala yung mga kadate ko. And that's the thing. I've never seen you on date. Bakit ganun? Nagulat siya sa bigla ang tanong nito. Lalo na dahil lagi nandyan si Lawrence. She did not really feel the need to complicate the situation dahil sa isipan niya noon, he will eventually call her girlfriend. Pero hindi nangyari. Hindi lang ako handa noon, pero ngayon, she responded. Taumanhin, wala akong may aalok sa'yo. Gusto mo ba ng kape? Tanong ni Valerie na sinubukang ibahin ang usapan. No thanks, I better go now too. I'll pick you up for lunch on Saturday. 
Oo naman, magkikita tayo. Noong Sabado, dinala siya ni Gail sa isang napakindang restaurant. Isa tong talk away steakhouse sa isang kalawang lugar na New Manila. Isa itong mansyon na ginawang restaurant. Ang lahat na naman ni Valerie na napaka-homey at kahanghanga. Sabi ni Archie, mahilig ka sa steak. Sabi ni Gail, habang hinihilala siya ng upuan. I do. I like going on food trips but I love steak and other types of meat the most. I can never be a vegetarian. I'm surprised. How do you manage to be so slim despite loving food? He has also taken the liberty to order for them ahead nung pinaserve nito ang table nila. I also work out. I try to do spin classes twice a week. Pakiramdam ko hindi buo yung week ko kapag hindi ako nakakapag-spin class. I didn't know that. You attend classes online or in studios. May alam akong spin studio malapit sa office ko. May bike ako sa bahay so either. I attend free classes online or just go to a studio when my schedule is more forgiving. So that explains the model-like body. She just smiled at the compliment. Natutuwa siya. He was actually asking about her and getting to know her and her hobbies. That's one thing Lawrence has not done. Pero bakit ba ikukumpara niya to kay Lawrence? Since you love to eat, what about drinking? Are you into wine? Because I ordered red for the vote of us. Salamat. Ang sarap. Mahilig ako sa alak pero mas gusto ko ang mga cocktail. Sinusubukan ko maghalo kapag wala ko ibang gagawin tuwing weekend. Oh, you do? You'd be an interesting wife. Wika ni Gael na may bastos ng iti sa labi. Gusto niya to. Gusto niyang malaman na ito'y maaaring humantong sa isang bagay na totoo. Unlike her setup with Lawrence na nanatiling stagnant ng walong taon. Lawrence? Tanong ni Gael. Looking at someone behind her. She turned around and threw enough. She saw Lawrence entering the restaurant. Pero ang mas kinagulat ni Valerie may kasama siyang babae. The woman looked stunning in a white dress sa banaha casual polo and pants si Lawrence. He easily spotted them at lumapit to sa table na kinaupo nila. Bro, nandito din pala kayo? Bati ni Lawrence sa kanila. Hi, Valerie. Hey, tipid na bati niya. Hi, sino maswerte ang babae? Tanong ni Gael. Oh, this is Cassie. Cassie, these are the friends of mine, Gael and Valerie. Numiti si Cassie at nag-hi sa kanila. Agad sang kininisa ni Valerie. We'll go to our table. I also reserved one. What a coincidence. Wika ni Lawrence bago umalis at tumupo ng sariling table. Medyo malayo sa kanila. Napakaganda ng view sa kanilang dalawa na ikiniinis ni Valerie. What a coincidence. Ulit ni Gael nakatingin sa kanya. I know. Lawrence was really annoying here intentionally. At ngayon nakikipaglandian to sa babaeng kasama kahit alam nitong nakikita niya yon. The nerve of that man. Are you okay, Valerie? Gael asked looking at her hand curled around her fork kahit wala pang steak na inorder nila. Yeah. Ayos na ako. Pwede ba tayo magpalit ng resto kung ayaw mo dito? Umiling si Valerie. No, this is perfect. In fact, two weeks na ni Valerie na hindi nakikita o nakakausap si Lawrence. Masarap pang steak. Nakalimutan ni Valerie ang magkadate na tinignan niya ilang metro ang layo. Nang malinis sa mga plato, agad siya nagpasalamat kay Gael sa paghatid sa kanya rito. I would most certainly come back. Paano mo nalaman ang lugar na to? The owner is a friend of mine from the US. Naging classmate ko siya in one of fours. Oh wow! Gusto kong kumain ng isa pa. Anyway, pwede bang pumunta na lang ako ng mabilis sa banyo? Tumango si Gael. Sure, hihintayin kita. Pumasok si Valerie sa isang maluwag na banyo na may tatlong cubicle. Mukha itong malinis at simpleng gaya ng tema ng iba pang lugar. After finishing, she washed her hands on the lavatory outside. What are you doing here? Gulat na gulat na tanong ni Valerie nang pumasok sa loob ng CR si Lawrence. Wala itong sinabi. Bigla lang siya hinalikan nito. Nayanig si Valerie sa kaibutunan niya. Nakapulupot ang mga kamay nito sa bewang niya nang dubampi ang labi nito sa labi niya. Ibinuka niya ang bibig niya, tinikpan siya at makalipas sa ilang segundo, sinimulan niya na itong halikan pabalik. Parang si Lawrence ang gamot sa kanya. Ang hindi niya ito nakikita sa loob ng dalawang linggo, parang impyerno. At ngayon madali siya nitong binuhat at pinaupos sa banyo. Anong gagawin mo? Muli, hindi si Lawrence sumagot. Mabilis lang nitong binuksan ng zipper ng pantalon at tinasampalda niya. Hinalikan siyang muli at lumika ng matinding pangangailangan sa kanya. I miss you, Valerie. Hindi si Valerie makapaniwala sa nangyayari. Nang bumalik siya sa realidad, tira na tulala siya. Nag-make love sila habang nasa magkahiwalay na date. Tamabesa niya si Lawrence para bigyan siya na isa pang halik. Hindi dapat ito nangyari. No, no, no. She murmured bago ito iniwan sa banyo. Valerie was sitting in an alfresco coffee shop kasamang best friend niya, si Marco. It was the weekend after the date with Gael which turned out for the worst after what happened between her and Lawrence. Tanga! Sigaw ni Margo sa kanya. Binato sa kanya isang pocket of sugar. Isa kang malaking tanga, Valerie. You really think it was a coincidence? 
Lawrence is playing you. For sure, he pulled all the strings para lang malaman kung saan ang first date niya ni Gael. Just so he can ruin it. I'm telling you, he is a narcissist. He is doing everything he can to make everything in your life be about him. Walang masabi si Valerie. That restaurant was in the suburb at dito masyadong kilala. Nakausap ka na naman niya. He tried calling pero hindi ko sinasagot. I just can't accept that I've done that to Gael. I feel so... Enough about the self-pity. It's time to move on, sis. Kung gusto mo talagang makawala sa lalaking yan, make it clear with him that you are with Gael now, okay? I-push mo na yan. Next week ng charity ball mo, hindi ba? Show him na wala siya epekto sa'yo and that Gael is the only man for you from now on. Tumangot ko si Valerie. Tama si Marco. Oras na para ilagay niya si Lauren sa kanyang nararapat na lugar at tiyak na wala iyon sa tabi niya. Gabi noon ng charity ball. Ni Valerie, ito ay ginanap sa pool area na isang engranding hotel. Ang buong kaganapan nasa labas na may pansamantalang yugto sa pagbed ng mga donasyon. Pumasok na lang para i-welcome mamang bisita at kasama si Gael. Nagsisimula na magtanong ilan sa lang kaibigan at pamilya kung bakit palagi sila nakikita magkasama kama kailan. Gusto mo ba nang maiinom? Tanong agad ni Gael na makarating sila sa assigned table nila. Tumango si Valerie. Nais niyang tiyakay ng lahat ay nasa kanilang nararapat na lugar. Ngunit pagkalas sa pagkalas ni Gael, mabilis siyang napalitan ng na isang buke ng bulaklak mula sa walang iba, kundi ang lalaking ayaw niya nang makita o makausap. Valerie, para sa'yo. She trying to remain expressionless. Ayaw niyang patulan pa ito. Thanks, but I won't be needing those. Kaya lumalabas ka, kaya mas malaking kaganapan ngayon kasama siya? Sooner or later, i-announce na ng parents namin na engagement and things will be official. I bet. Hindi ako nagbibiro. Who said you were joking? There he is, the lucky man. Binati ni Lawrence ang papalapit na si Gael holding two drinks at tinabot kay Valerie ang isa. Any date for tonight? Tanong ni Gael. Lawrence just shook his head. Wala akong mabolang sumama sa akin tonight. That's new, Gael commented. Well then I should be afraid na baka agawin mong date ko ngayong gabi? Kumindat si Lawrence sa direksyon niya. Kung gusto niya lang ako, tinapuno naman siya ng tingin ng bibigla ni Gael. We can share this table with Lawrence, right? Anyway, wala naman siyang kasama. Valerie was forced to nod. Of course, she would look bad kung tatanggi siya. Excuse me. Paalam ni Gael bago muling namula na maaasikaso siya. Komento ni Lawrence na nakatingin sa inuming binigay sa niya ni Gael. So gusto mo siya? Bigla si Lawrence nagseryoso. Nagkibit balikat ng si Valerie. I'm starting to. Mukhang nagiging seryoso na siya ngayon sa buhay. Mula nang bumalik siya, wala pa siya niligawan maliban sa'yo. Oh, ang tayong nasabi niya. She doesn't know why pero hindi niya maramdaman ang gustong maramdaman para kay Gael. Nagkaroon lang, walang atraksyon. Siya ay isang kaakit-akit at matamis na lalaki. Pero sa pangkahalatan, kaibigan lang talaga ang tingin ni Valerie sa kanya. Hindi pa sila naghalikan o naghawak ng kamay. Mabilis na halik lang sa pisngi at maikling yaka para batiin ang isa't isa. Babantayin ko pa rin siya. Ipapaalam ko sa iyo kung may... You don't have to, Lawrence. I'm okay with him and I trust him. You don't need to look after him for me, okay? Malamig ni Valerie ang sabi. Fine, if you say so. Pero masaya ka naman sa kanya, di ba? Oo. Pagsisinungaling ni Valerie. Kung gayon di na kita guguluhin pa. Para sa'yo talaga itong mga values. Consider them par parting gift. Archie then arrived kasama ni Gael. Nanalo kasi ito sa bidding para sa isang yacht which happens to be the biggest item for the auction ng gabing yun. Tumatangin ting na 10 million pesos ang binigay nito para sa charity ball na iyon. Higit pa ito sa inakala ni Valerie ang gago ni Lawrence para sa event. Everyone was congratulating her kanina pagtapos ng event at ngayon, silang apat na lang ulit ang nakaupo sa mesa. Oras na upang subukan ang pagmamaneho ng lalaking to. Inirekomenda ni Gael. Free ba kayo sa weekend? Tanong ni Lawrence. I am, sagot ni Archie. What about you, Valerie? His eyes were pleading for her to come pero natatakot siya. Baka ako na namang magawa niya oras na magkalapit ulit sila. As Gael stayed, you should come. Pamimilit pa ni Lawrence. I suggest you do. I can sense na gusto talaga ni Lawrence makasama ka. Napakulot ng ano ni Lawrence sa sinabi nga ng kaibigan. Yes, fine. Sasama ako basta let me know when. Oo naman. Magiging masaya to. Sigaw ni Archie. By the way, mauna na ako ha. I have to swing by the office for something urgent. Take care of my sister, okay? At umalis na si Archie. This was a successful ball, Valerie. I think your cause to help ethnic tribes in Mindanao will be given justice. Thanks to the generosity of this man beside you. Don't mention it. I like yachts as much as I love planes. Mabilis sa sala ni Lawrence. Isa pa wala akong yacht. Might be good to have just one. For fun. Finally, may katabi ng yachty ko. You can park beside mine. 
Maganda yan. Masayang sagot ni Lawrence. Anyway, I'm sorry, Valerie. There's been an emergency. Kailan ko makipagita sa secretary ko now for urgent work. Lawrence, can you drive her home? Tanong ni Gael. Nagulat si Lawrence sa tanong na yun. Yeah, iyahatid ko na siya pa uwi. Salamat bro, ingatan mo siya para sa akin. Bye Valerie, sabi ni Gael. Lalapitan sana siya ni Gael para halikan siya, pero bago pa nito magawa, hinila siya ni Lawrence sa gilid nito. Nagmamadali ka, diba? Then leave now. Uto si Lawrence. Uh, bye. Depend na paalam ni Valerie. Napailing si Gael habang pilipilit na wag tumawa. Make sure she gets home, okay? Baka kung saan mo pa siya dalhin. At ayun, umalis na nga si Gael. You don't have to drive me home. Magtataxi na lang ako. Let's go. Bulong ni Lawrence sa kanya as he pulled her right arm to him. Dala nito sa kabilang kamay ang bungkas ng bulaklak na bigay nito sa kanya kanina. You heard Gael, right? I'll take you home. It was a long, quiet ride. She was expecting Lawrence to take a tour knowing him. But surprisingly, he drove to the village quickly and safely. Itinigil ang sasakyan sa tapat ng bahay nila. Sleep tight. Tipid na paalam mabinata sa kanya. Nawirdohan talaga siya sa kanya. Okay? Salamat sa pag-uwi sa akin. Tumangon lang si Lawrence. Ingat ka. She said and was about to get out of his car pero wala pa rin imik dito. Ayos ka lang ba? Pumasok ka na lang sa loob. Hihintayin kita makapasok bago ko umalis. Uwi ka ni Lawrence. Tumangotong ko si Valerie sa sinabi nito. You are surprisingly calm. I told you I'll stay true to my word now. Gael is kinan you and he looks serious about you this time. Di na ako ahad lang sa ganyan. Mas kontento ka na rin ngayon kasama siya. Kaya kapag sinabi kong di na kita guguluhin, hindi na. At kunin mong regalo ko sa pamamaalam ko sa'yo. Iniabot ni Lauren sa kanyang bukay ng bulaklak. Thank you. And she stepped out the car and walked to the gates. Narinibago si Valerie. Hindi niya alam kung dapat pong matuwa o hindi. Gone was the playful, forceful Lawrence that he knew. Malaya na siya ngayon. Nung makapasok si Valerie ng gate nila, narinig niyang pinaharulot na ni Lawrence paalis ang sasakyan. She is not sure whether she likes this feeling now. All aboard! Nasa ng kapitan natin today? Nakangiting taon ng Nigael as they were boarding the new yacht. It was newly painted and furnished. It had been another two weeks mula ng charity ball. Lawrence was really able to up the game of the yacht. It was now painted heavily in white with blue accents. Pero walang pangalan ang yate hanggang ngayon. Valerie looked around the huge stack with a table in the middle, holding food and drinks. This is amazing! Archie said as he looked around the food on the table. I don't believe Lawrence did this. Hey everyone! Bati na isang magandang babae, nakakalabas lang sa loob ng yacht. Cassie? Gael greeted and Shirley. Right. Ito ang babaeng kasama ni Lawrence sa restaurant sa Manila a few weeks ago. And she was just wearing a pair of yellow bikinis now. Valerie was fuming with anger upon seeing her but she tried to compose herself. I didn't know we were supposed to bring dates, Archie said. Hi, I'm Archie, Laurie's friend. I'm Gael again and this is Valerie. Pakilala sa kanila ni Gael. I remember you, the woman said. You were that couple from our date a few weeks ago. Yeah, tipid na sagot ni Valerie. The girl was so bubbly, gusto niya itong kutusan. Ang feeling close. Right on time. Lawrence got out of the deck and welcomed his guest with a smile. Valerie did not know he looks even better aboard his own yacht. He was freshly shaven in a white short sleeve polo. Naka-shades to ngayon dahil matindi ang sikat ng araw. It has been two weeks simula na ihatid siya nito sa bahay and damn, she missed seeing him. Di na nga siya kinulit ito matapos ito magpaalam sa kanya. Cassie snaked her arms around his. She looks like a leech now. Hey guys, masayang bati ni Lawrence. All set? Aha, uh -huh. where do we put our luggages? Gael asked. The yacht has four bedrooms. Just feel free to check out the rooms. But mine is the master suite so choose from the rest. Then you can leave your bags there and I'll get the beast moving. He responded. You know how to drive a yacht, right? Pariniguro ni Archie sa kaibigan. Of course I do. If all else fails, Gael is here. He also knows how. Nagbibirong wika ni Lawrence. Gael and Archie went inside to check out the rooms, kaya sumunod na rin siya. She tried her best to not look at Lawrence or else makikita nitong galit sa mga mata niya. God, she hates that Cassie. Siguro ito na ngayon ang body ni Lauren since she was not available anymore. You can stay here, Valerie. Room next to me. Tawag sa kanya ni Archie. Oh sure, that's perfect. The room was good for a couple. My queen size bed sa gitna. A bedside lamp, a small TV set, and closet to the right. She went inside and placed her luggage on the bed. If you need anything, I'll just be right across. She turned around and it was Lawrence. What? My room is just across yours if you need anything. Ulit pa nito sa sinabi. 
She just nodded. Babe, let's start the party. Tawag ni Cassie mula sa hallway. Valerie tried to stop herself from rolling her eyes. Lauren stepped and went back on deck while she was left alone in the room. Gael then entered habang nilalabas si Valerie ang mga gamit mula sa luggage. She's planning to change into a pair of red bikinis this instant. Akala yata ng kasi na yun, siya lang may magandang katawan. You're okay? Gael asked. She looked up at him while holding the bikinis she'd chosen. Uh-huh. Why wouldn't I be? You look like you're ready to kill Cassie. She fake laughed. Why will I? Gael sat on her bed and smiled. Come on, Valerie. You can tell me anything. If you want us to work out, we can be honest with each other. I am not stupid to not know what's going on. Your mother might be, but I'm not. She just remained staring at him. Unsure of what to say. I am not forcing you to say anything to me, but as your friend, I will help you. Change into those bikinis and I'll do the rest. Gael stood up and winked at her pagkatapos, lumabas na siniradong pinto ng kwarto niya. What the heck does he mean by that? Valerie stepped out back into the deck looking hot and unbothered in her red two-piece swimsuit. Kasano ko yung nasa lounge chairs na doon si Nagael, Archie, Cassie, and Lawrence, drinking cocktails. Magsa-sunset na tag-decide na sila na mag-sunset drinks before dinner. And as she walked to her friends, biglang sumipol si Gael. That's my girl. Then he motioned for her to share his lounge chair as it was good enough for two. Isa pa apat namang lounge chair na naroon. She smiled at sat beside him. Bakit ang extra klingi nito ngayon? Who knew I'd be this lucky? Patuloy pang puri ni Gael while putting an arm around her na makapo siya sa tabi ng binata. Why is he suddenly acting like a boyfriend? She then glanced at Lawrence and Cassie's direction pero walang imik ito. Lawrence was still wearing his shades kaya hindi ni Valerie makita ang mga mata nito. But his brows were knitted together. Careful Gael, the brother is here. Paalala pa ni Archie sa kaibigan. Yeah, yeah, of course. I will marry her first and do the honorable thing. Pabirong sagot ni Gael. Lawrence stood up and offered her a cocktail. Valerie accepted it and smiled at him as thanks. Habang nakapulupot pa rin sa kanya si Gael. You better loosen up your hold. She might choke. Pura ni Lawrence kay Gael bago ito bumalik sa lounge share nito. Gael just chuckled. And in a whisper, he told her, I think my acting is working. And he winked at her. She finally got what he meant. He was purposely making Lawrence jealous. Oh gosh, she did not know if she was a wise thing to do. But just looking at her smooching that fake present Cassie across them made her want to kill him. How dare he try to replace her immediately with that bimbo? Gael noticed that she was staring at them, so he captured her face and planted a soft kiss on her lips. It was brief but sweet. Nagulat si Valerie sa ginawa nito but what shocked her most was when Lawrence stood up all of a sudden. You boys wanna go fishing? Biglang tanong nito kay Nagael at Archie. Archie boredly shrugged. Gael tightened his hold around Valerie. I don't know. I am enjoying the sunset with Valerie here, he said, while rubbing his hand up and down her shoulders. Come on, we might have nothing for dinner kung mamaya pa tayo mangingisda. You have all the time in the world to cuddle later on. Lawrence buckingly said. And one more thing. I'm sure she doesn't like being choked to death like that. Let's go fishing. Gael sighed in resignation at tumayo na rin. He just winked at Valerie before leaving, as if he was happy with the turn of events. And because the boys went out back to fish, she was left on deck with cheerful Cassie. So, how long have you been together? Cassie asked. Um, a month and a half? He's been home from the US since then. We're, we're not really together yet, just dating. Sagot ni Valerie. She sat back and tried to ignore by her, sipping on her cocktail. Really? Kala ko ikakasal na kayo. It is supposed to be an arranged marriage, but... We'll see how it goes, she honestly replied. She wanted to end the conversation and enjoy the sunset, pero mukhang walang balak ang babaeng tong tantanan siya. Well, Lawrence and I have just recently met. She looked at Cassie now interested in whatever she has to say. But I don't know if he's into a relationship. Wala pa raw siya naging girlfriend, so I'm a bit worried. What if he is still a virgin? She almost choked on her drink. What? I mean... Isn't it odd that a man like him at his age has not had any girlfriend yet? But he's cute, so could he be gay? Would you know? Napakarap si Valerie sa mga pinagtatanong ng babae sa harapan niya. You guys are old friends, right? So you would know if he is. Cassie pressed on. And then, an idea came into her head. You know what? Now that you mentioned it, it kinda makes sense. Nanlaki ang mga mata ni Cassie. He's always ever been with Gael and Archie when we were growing up. He never had a girlfriend. I would always catch him sleeping over in my brother's room since we were kids, even up until now. So you mean, Archie could also be... Oops! 
She did not mean na madami ang kapatid niya, pero too late. Hindi na ni Valerie mababawi pa mga sinabi. Just don't tell anyone about my said. It's just a hench. Just maybe. Cassie's jaw dropped at her statement, and the woman was quiet for the rest of that afternoon. Dinner turned out to be nice. The boys caught a lot of fish that they grilled for dinner. Natapos na ng kumain ng 9pm. Valerie volunteered to wash the dishes and girls stayed beside to help her. Nasa kitchen sila now ng yat at pinagtutulungan ang mga platong kailangan ni Nisen. He was extra curious about us a while ago while we were fishing. He's been asking questions. Balita ni Gael sa kanya. Valerie was sure he was referring to Lawrence. Like, what questions? Whether I'm starting to like you and whether I want to push through with this arranged marriage. What did you tell him? Honestly, Valerie, I don't have a girlfriend and no woman out there was able to get my attention enough for me to stay with her for long. I don't think I'm meant to fall in love and all that. I just want to have a wife that I can go home, someone that will support me and be a friend too. I see you being able to fulfill that. He calmly said, That's what I told him. Wow, that's sweet. What about you? You think you can marry me and forget all about you and him? Nagulat si Valerie sa diretsahang tanong nito. Nabitawan ng baso ni Lilinis. It broke ng bumaksak to sa sink and some glass bounced on her hand, cutting some skin on her forefinger. Oh shit! She said in pain. Hold on! Gael quickly grabbed her hand and sucked on the blood flowing from her fingers. Everything happened so fast. Valerie was just looking at Gael sucking on her forefinger na makita na lamang niya si Lawrence na biglang itinulak to. What are you doing to her? Galit na galit na tanong ni Lawrence sabang hawak-hawak si Gael sa kwelo ng polo shirt nito. She's just hurt. Gael replied. Pinakawalan to ni Lawrence as he turned his attention to her. What happened? Itinas ni Valerie ang dumudugong kamay to show him that Gael was not lying. Lawrence pulled her right arm at hinaladgan siya papasok sa master suite. She turned around to look at Gael but he just shrugged, choosing not to follow them. Valerie was shocked as Lawrence pushed her to sit down on his bed. Hindi siya sigurado if she should be there. Baka kung ano na naman ang mangyaring hindi dapat. What the hell was that? Galit na tanong ni Lawrence sa kanya. While still trying to keep his voice down, the bedrooms were still small and were only separated by walls. Baka marinig sila ni Archie at Cassie. For some reasons, Cassie was nowhere to be found. She was not in Lawrence's suite. I was just washing the dishes. Nabasag ko pa nga lang yung isang baso mo eh. Pag-amin ni Valerie. Lawrence lifted her hand na may sugat na tinitigan yun. Bleeding won't stop if you let a man kiss it. He was not kissing my finger. Pagtutol ni Valerie. He was just sucking the blood off. That's way even worse. He quickly opened his closet at may kinuhang pulong first aid kit doon. It was a box. Pagbukas doon may lamang ko ano ng type ng gauzes and some medicine to stop bleeding. Lauren sat beside her and grabbed her bleeding finger again. Nilagyan niya ng alcohol and then betadine to stop the bleeding. At pagkatapos piniikot nito ni Lauren sa band-aid. That is how you stop bleeding. Inis pa rin bulong ni Lawrence. You know what? He probably knows about us with the way you're acting. She calmly said, We have to talk to him. Do you really like him that much? He asked, looking hurt that she was more worried about Gael's feelings now. Well, he's nothing but nice to me since we started dating. He did not answer. Tumayo na lang tat binalik ang first aid kit sa closet nito. Thanks for this. I'm going to bed now. Cassie might also see me here and might get the wrong idea. Pagdadahilan niya and left the room as quickly as she can. Gael was still in the kitchen, drying up the dishes that she washed. Wala na rin sink ang basag na baso kay Nina. He cured you? Gael asked kaba na kangiting na nakakaloko sa kanya. Yeah, he did. Are you okay? Di ka naman nasaktan. Gael just shrugged. That was just a friendly banter between us. I'm used to him throwing punches at me every now and then. But the real question is, are you really okay? Valerie did not answer. Come on, Valerie, tell me the truth. Gael was done putting all the dishes on the dish rack. So she pulled him to his bedroom for some privacy. Gael quickly followed at sinarado ang pintuan. So, he pressed while sitting down on her bed. Valerie remained standing up and walking back and forth. I don't know how to explain but Lawrence and I never really had a real relationship. That asshole? He cursed. So ano kayo? And how long has that been happening? You cannot fool me, Valerie. You're not just friends. I've seen the way he touches you and looks at you. Well, we're friends who happen to sleep together on some days. It's been going on for eight years and now... Eight years? Gulat na tanong ni Gael. This is really something. I mean... I never understood why I've never seen Lawrence with a woman before, but it seemed to always have someone. He would always disappear saying he needs to meet someone or fetch someone or go to someone. So that has been you all along? 
well, I'm not sure if it was just entirely me, we never really had anything official. He never committed himself to me. And why did you allow it? Valerie sat beside him because the question was suddenly too heavy for her to bear. Bakit nga ba hinayaan niyang tumagal ng ganoon? I always hoped at the back of my mind that he will eventually ask me to be his girlfriend and that we would stop hiding. But that's eight years, Valerie. I know. Ang tanga ko, no? Napailing na lang din si Valerie sa sarili. So what's the turning point? Well, it's been eight years and I'm not getting any younger. Naiinip na rin ako maghintay. Then my parents came to talk to me about the possible match between us. I just, I just realized how badly they were worrying about me too. To spring up such an idea. A lone tear dropped down her right cheek. Gal was quick to wipe it away. But Valerie continued. And then I told him about our possible engagement. And he did not even bother. He repetitively called me his friend and that he would just wanted me. The best for me. Since we've been friends for so long. She just nodded in resignation. Showing how she never wanted it to be. But it just was. Gal comforted her with a hug. It was the least he could do. Pagbabayarin kong gagawin ang mga ginawa niya sa'yo. Pagsasasihan niyang walang taong pinagsamahan ninyo. And she cried her stuff to sleep on Gal's shoulders that night. It was already morning. Valerie woke up when sudden brightness hit the back of her eyes. Sino bang bigla na lang nagbukas ng mga kortina? She quented and slowly opened her eyes while adjusting to the light. What is it? She muttered, still trying to open her eyes. Get up! Maring utos ng boses na yun. Hindi si Valerie pwede magkamali. That voice could only be Lawrence. She shut up at kilusot-kusot ang mga mata. What is wrong with you? It is so early in the morning. Lawrence was standing in front of her bed, fuming with anger, and he stared at the space beside her. Napasunod si Valerie sa kung anong tinitingnan nito at laking gulat niya na makita doon si Gael, sleeping soundly and unbothered. Oo nga pala. They were talking last night at napagod siya sa kakaiyak na nakatulog na yata siya sa tabi nito. What is he doing here? Sigaw ni Lawrence na ikinagising ni Gael. Gael also sat up at gulong-gulong nakatingin sa kanilang dalawang Lawrence. What did you do to her? Tanong mo ni Lawrence. This time he pulled her up at palayo kay Gael. Chill bro, we just slept. Sagot ni Gael habang nakatas ang dalawang kamay in an act of surrender. I swear nothing happened. Pumasok na rin si Archie sa kwarto nang marinig ang sigawan ng dalawa. Did you... No! Sigaw ni Valerie. Nothing happened, okay? You're making a fuss out of nothing. Isa pa, ano bang pakialam mo? Stop looking after me. Si Cassie ang pagtuunan mo ng pansin. Nagdaniladiretso na si Valerie palabas ng kwarto. She was only in her denim shorts and white t-shirt na nakatulugan na rin niya kagabi at wala siyang balak magpalit ng damit. They all were probably still inside the boat fighting over why Gael slept beside her that night. He was ignoring her the last few weeks tapos ngayon nakikialam to sa kanilang dalawa ni Gael. Can we talk? Valerie turned around to see Lawrence standing beside her, brows knitted. Mukhang galit pa rin to at irita matapos makita sa ni Gael na magkatabi sa kama kanina-kanina lang. Are you done beating up my fiancé? She asked emotionlessly. He swore nothing happened between the two of you last night. Totoo ba yun? So what if it's true? What gives you the right to meddle in our business? Singhal niya rito. I know wala akong karapatan pagsabihan ka, but I know Gael more than you do. He likes women and he likes sleeping around. He may be... So what if we sleep together? We're going to get married anyway. It is better than sleeping with someone who doesn't have any intention of marrying you, right? He was struck at her sudden accusation. I didn't know you wanted marriage as an end. Tanga ba talagang lalaking to? Any woman deserves to be respected, Lawrence. And what happened between us the last eight years? There was no respect there whatsoever. You used me. And I guess for some reasons I allowed it, but now I am standing up for myself. You don't have any right to meddle in my business anymore. Whatever is between me and Gal or just between me and him now. She was about to walk out and leave him but he was quick to grab her arm. Valerie, I mean it when I say I want what's best for you. Then you should stop talking to me from now on. I am sick and tired of always saying goodbye to you without you meaning it. I am marrying Gael now. No one, not even you could stop me. And one last thing, we can never be friends. Nailabas niyang galit na nasa dibdib niya. Siguro nga hindi tamang sumama siya sa bakasyon na to. Between her and Lawrence, there will be never just friendship. Palagi may bahay na nakaraan nila because their past was not a joke. They were friends but they acted more like a couple than anything else. So now she has to set boundaries and to never talk to him again. The feelings will always remain. So if she wants to straighten her path now, she had to stay as far as from him possible. They can never go back to just being friends. Four years ago, 
Congratulations, bro. Cheers. Sigaw ni Archie. Kasalukuyan silang nasa penthouse ni Lawrence. Enjoying a bottle of champagne in the company of women. Nagdala ng mga babaeng kaibigan si Archie to celebrate Lawrence's promotion as the CEO of One Pacific Airlines. Gal was also there but he was busy lip-locking with a model friend brought by Archie. Woohoo! Sigaw na isa sa mga babaeng nadaroon. Lawrence just smiled at them as all as thanks. This was the after party already. Nagsimulang party kanina sa mansyon nila kasama mga magulang nila ang major shareholders ng airline sila. They were at his balcony overlooking Makati skyline. He stood up and stared at the wonderful midnight view. The air was cool and perfect for a celebration, but something seemed to be missing. Valerie was not there. Nagawi sila a few days ago. She was so mad when news about him came out na tumatawid ng kalsada sa BGC habang kasama isang lalaki, celebrity actress sa bansa. Their photos were all over the tabloid na nakita yun ni Valerie. He sighed in disappointment. He did not understand why she would get mad over him eating dinner with an old friend. Nagkatanong na sikat to, kaya marami ang paparating-parating sumusunod. Inubos na lamang ni Lawrence ng isang nagok ang natitirang champagne sa basa't pagkatapos pinatong yun sa table. By all means, continue the party and stay here. Wake ka niya sa grupo. No one looked at him. He missed his little Valerie who was probably still mad at her. I'm off. You guys, enjoy. Paaram pa ni Lawrence sa mga ito. I'll be back tomorrow. Don't ruin the place. No one even bothered to look at him so quickly, he grabbed his keys and left. In just about 20 minutes, he was right outside the mansion of the Blancos. It was 1 in the morning and Valerie was probably asleep. Kinuha niyang smartphone at tinawagan to. About 5 rings and a sleepy Valerie was probably asleep. Kinuha niyang smartphone at tinawagan to. Hello. Hey beautiful, are you still mad at me? There was no reply from the other line. I'm outside your house. Open your balcony door. I'm climbing up. What? No. Mariing sagot ni Valerie. I'm already asleep. You can't go up. Valerie, we haven't talked for three days. I just want to see you. If you want to get late tonight, go bother some other girl. Sigaw nito sa telepono. I just want to share good news. I got promoted finally. I want to celebrate it with you. Valerie's line was quiet. She had to let him in. She of all people knew how much he wanted this promotion and how badly he worked hard for this. Valerie? He pushed, checking if she was still there. I just opened my balcony door. Come in. She calmly said. That made him smile and made his heart swell. At the end of the day, whether he had a tough week or some good news, he always wanted to tell her. She had always been his best friend. He never could imagine a life without her. It has been about two months, almost two months na. Wala nang sumama si Valerie sa bakasyon na yon, sa yat ni Lawrence. And since then, she has not seen him or talked to him. Pinanindigan niyang desisyon na hindi na magiging parte ng buhay nito for good. It is true. They can never be just friends no matter how much they try. Nasa mall si Valerie ngayon kasamang best friend na si Margo. So, hindi pa rin tumatawag? Tanong ni Margo sa kanya. She was looking through the neckties on the counter. It was supposed to be Gal's birthday tonight pero parang wala itong plano mag-celebrate with her. He has been MIA for the last week. Ni tawag o text wala. Ang huli lamang nitong sinabi sa na isang araw, may emergency tong kailangan asikasuhin. She even went to Gal's office but he wasn't there. She is getting worried about him. Gal had been such a good friend the last couple of months. Ito ang tagalo ni Valerie kapag nalulungkot siya at kapag wala siya masyadong ginagawa. No one knew about her and Lawrence except for Gael. Kaya, nagpapasalamat siya. Dito ay mas na magalit ay inuunawa niya ito. They have agreed to push through the marriage. They both agree that friendship is a good foundation. But more than that, they are hoping that one day, they grow to love each other as more than friends. Di pa man yun nangyayari sa ngayon, she cares enough for him to push through with the wedding. After all, wala na siyang ganang mag-date at manap na ibang lalaki. Naniniwala si Valerie na tama palaging desisyon ng mga magulang niya para sa kanya. No, he hasn't called yet. I think he's busy. I'll just call my brother to ask him a surprise party silang inihanda for Gael. What do you think of this tie? Talong ni Valerie kay Marco as she pointed out to a midnight blue tie. Her friend just shrugged. But isn't it weird? May emergency daw na inaasikaso. I don't want to bother him. Pero as his fiancé, hindi ba may karapatan ka? Margo, I am his friend above all else. Yes, we have an agreement to get married, but I don't want to intrude in his life. I'm just here if he's ready to tell me anything. He is like that to me. He listens and understands, so I want to be the same person for him. Kung ano mang pinagdaraan niyang emergency ngayon, I'll give him space to deal with that. Hi, di ko na lamang ipapaya ko sa'yo eh. You'll have a relationship with Lawrence only to get married with someone you did not actually love. So ano? 
guidance counselor ka lang para ng fiancé mo ngayon? She just grabbed three neckties na nagustuhan niya and continued walking towards the other counter of her belts. Maybe love is a privilege only for the few. Hindi na ako naniniwalang para sa lahat yun. As long as I'm happy with my life, purpose of helping other people, that's enough to keep me contented with life. Napailig na lang si Margo sa kaibigan. Hindi ko alam kung dapat pa kitang inominate bilang santa sa Vatican, but Valerie remained clueless. Tilex si Valerie to kung may surprise party para kay Gael tonight. She called her mom instead. Hello, ma? Yes, Iha. Are you still in the office? No, ma. I just want to ask if you kakuya is there. No, he's not yet back from work. Ang alam ko dadaan muna siya kay Gael tonight. Um, but all he said. So there's a surprise party after all, and Gael is back in the city. Pero bakit di mo lang siya sinabihan nito? She made up her mind. She's going to gate crash that party. If Gael is in trouble, then as his friend, he can reach out to her. It was around 9 in the evening na makarating si Valerie sa building ni Gael. His unit was on the top floor at kaya na naman siya na receptionist doon kaya mabilis siya nakataas. So she took the private elevator to Gael's penthouse while carrying a box of cake as her gift. The ride was long but her heart was beating fast. For some reason, pakiramdam ni Valerie, nakikita siya ni Lawrence tonight. Well, hindi naman maiwasan yon. They are in the same circle. And Lawrence is a good friend of her brother and her fiancé. Pero hindi niya alam kung bakit kinasa pa rin niyang mag-ayos ng todo tonight. Ganito ba talaga ang feeling kapag makikita mong ex mo? Well, technically, is not an ex-boyfriend and more of an ex-fuck buddy. The elevator door opened. The penthouse living area was familiar. Ilang beses rin siya nakapunta dito the last couple of months. She stepped out of the elevator to see no one else inside until she heard some noise and laughter is coming from the balcony. Kaya naglakad siya papunta doon and true enough, Gael, Lawrence, and her brother Archie were there in the company of unfamiliar women. What caught her attention first was Lawrence. His tie was nowhere to be seen and a few buttons on his midnight blue long sleeve polo was undone. His hair looked carefree after a long day of work at may hawak itong glass of wine while looking at the woman across him. May inis na nabubuo sa dibim ni Valerie and just to control herself, she decided to stop overanalyzing the situation and just dive right in. Hi guys, you're all having fun without me? Masayang bati ni Valerie sa mga bisita ni Gael. Everyone turned around to look at her, but her eyes were fixed on Lawrence. His eyes were shocked to see her, but she clearly saw how he looked at her from head to toe. Clearly checking her out and appreciating the view. Lawrence was the first one to stand. Weren't accepting you. Uh, well, it was because it's a surprise. She held up the box of cake she was holding. Happy birthday to my dear fiancé. She said and smiled. Gal also quickly stood up and went over her to kiss her on the cheek, accepting the box of cake. I didn't know you were coming. He whispered to her ears. How are you? I just wanted to check if you're okay. She whispered back, sincerely concerned for his well-being. I will tell you soon was all he said before leading her to the table with everyone. Sit here, Valerie, her brother Archie said, pointing to the vacant seat beside him across Gael. She smiled and did so, not taking his eyes off Lawrence who was also intently looking at her. Oh, we have new company, she said looking at the two unfamiliar women with them on the table. Is Lawrence collecting women out to parade in front of her? Nagsawa na kayado kay Cassie. Do you have secret younger sisters I don't know about, Gael? She joked. They are my friends. These are Alonda and Selina. Sinasabi na nga ba niya? This man is really a man whore. All she couldn't believe he would date college girls. They both look so young. This should be illegal. Oh, I never knew you liked college girls. Younger than you. I like them young. Why not? He joked but no one else laughed. Hi, I'm Selina. Mabilis na pahilala ng babaeng katabi naman ni Archie. Hey. Hi. The girl Alondra meekly greeted her. Valerie knew she could be intimidating if she wanted to. She's a rich heiress after all. Pero naawa naman siya sa dalaga kaya nitiyan niya ito kahit papaano. And to make the air lighter, she suddenly coaxed everyone. So, what are we waiting for? Let's drink. I want to make a toast for my childhood friend who is now a special person in my life. I hope this new age and year brings you more joy and success. You're only just starting but I can clearly see the fruits of your labor already. A toast to your greatness, Kael. And everyone clicked their wine goblets and drank. Thanks for that. Pero napansin ni Valerie, hindi umiinom si Alondra. Why didn't you drink? You don't like wine? She really doesn't drink, Gael said. So you knew each other? I thought she was Lawrence's friend. She is, but I mean, Lawrence bring her with us all the time. 
and have never seen her drink ever. Gael answered, Lawrence bring you into this group all the time? I never knew he had someone special. She replied, now shooting dagger stares at both Lawrence and Alondra. She just wanted to leave at this instant. Nakarma yata siya sa pag sa party na to. Perhaps this is why Gael never bothered inviting her in the first place because Lawrence would be there with his latest toy. I also want to make a toast. Archie stood up. Pero hindi na rin nagdivari ang sinasabi ng kapatid niya. Her eyes are now laser focused on Lawrence. This guy. Valerie could not remember how much tequila and wine she had. She only remembered coaxing everyone to take tequila shots. She was so bad at Lawrence as sinunsunod niya ang shot ng tequila just to forget the pain. But also she wanted to punish herself. Akala ni Valerie okay na siya after two months of not seeing him. But there he was with a new girl and now she's back to zero and hurting. Drink this. Utos ng isang barito ng bosa sa kanya. She can see Lawrence handing her a glass and some pills. Nananagini pa rin yata siya. I don't want this dream, she whispered. Valerie, drink this kung gusto mong mawalang hang over mo. She opened her mouth as instructed, just to find out that the pills can cure this intense headache, hammering her head. It was an innocent act. He put the pills on her tongue then helped her up with a glass of water. She was about to close her eyes again the rest ng biglang halikan siya nito. He seemed to like it as his lips descended down her jaw to her neck. He hands have gone up her dress. I miss it so bad. She heard him whisper. It almost felt real. It feels real that she suddenly opened her eyes. The ceiling of the room was wooden with drastic lightings. Wait, this isn't her room, and the bed is not hers. It suddenly dawned on her that she's wide awake and she's Lawrence's penthouse. She tried to cover herself ng kahit pa paano na lamang. The headache was starting to subside thanks to whatever pills she drank. And now she was staring at the half-naked Lawrence in front of her on the bed. Ano ginagawa ko dito? She asked, dumbfounded. She looked at his clock and saw that it was 6 a.m. So it wasn't a dream. You were drunk, was all he said. I thought we were in Gael's and she was trying to remember what happened. I brought you home but you said you did not want your parents to see you drink. So I bought you here instead. Where is my brother? Ito dapat na nag-drive sa kanya pa uwi. He is also dead drunk. But I dropped her off Selena's apartment. He lost in a dare to Selena so he has to live in there for a week. Ha? Huh? What dare? Wala na talaga si Valerie maalala sa mga sinasabi nito. Never mind, was all he said as he stood up. I guess you are awake now. So you're planning to take advantage of me when I was half asleep? You pulled me in. I was only going for a kiss. What would Gael think? Hiyang-hiya si Valerie sa sarili ngayon. So he really hasn't told you yet? That asshole. He cursed angrily. She looked up at him with hatred. Makikialam na naman ba kami? Sa dalawa? Leave him. Now. What? Are you crazy? Valerie, he won't push through with this engagement. Believe me. She stared at him like he has gone crazy. It's hard to believe me, but I'm sure he won't. He has other priorities now that he has to handle. She tried to push him away to stand up, but his hold on her was firm as stone. No, you're not going home now, he said. Look, kung may problema ka kay Gael, just tell him. Wag mo kong idamay. Gael has gotten another girl pregnant. Diretsyong balita ni Lawrence. Her jaw dropped at the news. Where's my bag? Huh? I need to call him. Where's my bag? Lawrence stood up to get her purse on the couch and handed it over. The call with just Gael ended at di siya makapaniwala sa narinig. He got a girl pregnant on his first day back in the Philippines and the woman was Alondra. The young girl she was hating on last night dahil akala niya babae ito ni Lawrence. She was able to breathe now. Lawrence did not have anyone Alondra, was Gail's girl. She knew it was weird to feel relieved now kahit na nakabuntis na ibang babae ang fiancé niya. Lawrence was staring at her. Nakaupo pa rin to sa kama across her the whole time she was talking to Gail. Why are you such a kind-hearted person? was all he said. As I said, Gail is a good friend. He was the only person who understood for me the last few months because no one knew about us, only him. And now it's my turn to give him the support he needs. But don't you at least hate him for not telling you? He has his reasons, she answered. Gael has always wanted his father's approval and she knew that. That's why nag-aalala si Valerie ngayon dito. What if his father finds out? He has worked so hard to acquire the position he has now in their company. Napailing na lang si Lawrence. I am such a bastard for abusing your kindness before. Tinilingan na Valerie to at tumango siya. Yeah. I can sometimes be quite gullible, but anyway, thanks for letting me sleep here for a while. But I need to go home. Marami pa akong aasikasuhin. It is Gael's party at the Allegri Mansion tonight. Are you seriously thinking of marrying him? Galit na ni Lawrence. 
Gal and I will still talk. Valerie, mahal niya si Alondra. I can see it. So it's better if you just stay away. Gal needs me in the party. Darating ang pinakamalaking investor nila tonight. And hearing that Gael would marry Blanco would help seal the deal. I just have to be there and appear in his arms. That's all. What do you mean? You agree to being used? You know he will break the engagement sooner or later to marry her. Gael is a friend. I'm going to only help him. It's a price not taking advantage of me if I'm freely giving my help, right? You of all people know how much I love helping people. Iko rin mapapahiya if you go through with this charade, Valerie. She just shrugged. Drive me back home, please. I need to prepare for tonight. He did not listen. I did not want to see you being used by somebody else. I will kill Gal after this. Instead of pulling her up to bed, he pushed her back and crashed his lips on hers again. Ano ba? Stop! She ordered him as his hand and body pinned down her arms, so she stays trapped beneath him. He silenced her with a tender kiss, coaxing her lips to open up to him. She has never seen been kissed for two months now but it was really because no one has ever kissed him other than him and she could not bring herself to kiss another guy since then the truth is she missed his kisses it was full of connection and spark like he was pouring out his soul to her and that is why she always felt captivated by him lawrence has successfully removed her dress in the way and she has pulled down her underwear do you want me to stop now oh how he was cruel how could you tell him to stop now no she whispered back he smiled at her before kissing her fully on the lips again. Valerie, Lawrence is downstairs. Sabay daw kayong pupunta sa birthday party ni Gail tonight? Takang-takang talang ng mama ni Valerie sa kanya ngayon. Valerie just finished her makeup but kasi na ko siya nagbibihis sa walk-in closet niya ngayon. She never agreed to go with him but why is he downstairs? Ah, pasabi nilang po, pababa na ako in a bit. Okay, was all her mom said. Her mom was about to leave the room nang bumalik na sa harapan niya. Valerie, tell me the truth. Is there something going on between you and Lawrence? Ma, wala, was all she said. Totoo naman ang sinasabi niya. Yes, they may be having make love every now and then, pero hindi naman ibig sabihin nun sila na. But he always seemed to pick you up every time we're off to the Alcaraz mansion, as if he is announcing to everyone, especially to Gael and his family, that you are his. Ma, he's friends with Gael. We're all friends. Then why isn't Gael the one picking you up? Ma, Gael is busy. No one is too busy, especially if he's your fiancé. Ma, she interrupted her. Valerie was getting annoyed already. This engagement between me and Gael is what you and dad want. It's what Gael's parents want. I'm just not sure if this is what Gael and I really want. But for your sakes, we're willing to put up a show. Ay namin ipahiya kay today. We both know this is an important day, especially for Tita and Tito. I didn't know that's how you felt, Valerie. I thought you were more than fine with us whole idea. Ma, come on. I'm fine. You've always been such an obedient daughter. I never even bothered asking if you were okay because you always seemed to be fine with everything. Her mom looked close to crying na para bang awang-awa ito sa kanya. Ma, stop it. Hindi kita sinisisi, okay? All I'm saying is I want to help you as much as I can. I like making the people around me happy at, at your expense. Was all her mother said. Don't worry, Iha. I'll talk to your dad. You don't have to worry. If Florence is man enough to tell us he wants to marry you, we will allow it. Natawa na lang si Valerie sa sinabi niya ng mama niya. Ma, he's just a friend, okay? He doubts he would ever do that. Go to her parents to ask for her hand in marriage. Palagi nga itong patagang umakit sa balcony door niya para hindi ito makita na mga magulang niya, lalo pa nung teenagers pa lamang sila. You didn't have to pick me up. Nagtataka na si na mama sa'yo. Irit ang balita ni Valerie pag sa akin ng SUV ni Lawrence. Gael might bring Alondra. Ganting balita rin ni Lawrence sa kanya. I didn't expect that. She was shocked. So ipapakilala na ni Gael sa Alondra sa mga magulang nito. On the same na darating ang importanting investors na si Gael mismo nag-invite. They need the youngs to invest in a new business development headed by Gael. It is his personal project to prove to his dad na karapat dapat siyang maging tagapamahala ng holding ng company nila. I know. I just want you to know I'm here. What for? If you want to run away from the event... If you want to run away from Gael and all this, he replied. She just shrugged. I just want to help Gael today, that's all. 
If given a chance, gusto ko rin sana makausap si Alondra. I want to make peace with her and tell her that I'm okay and I'm not after Gael. He just looked at her like she was crazy. Other women would usually pull the hair out of their fiancé's mistress. Who cares? I'm not like other women. You clearly aren't. He said as he held her right hand to give it a light squeeze. Shall we go now? Tipid na sagot ni Validate sa madal na sa passenger seat. Di na lamang niya sinabi but his hand on hers was giving her so much comfort. But the fear inside her head was getting bigger and bigger. What if masanin naman siyang nandyan to sa tabi niya? Will she be okay once again? He chooses to leave. Valerie entered the office of Gerald Alegre. Her mom said dinahanap daw siya ng tita sa linya at kasalukoy ito nasa opisina ngayon ng asawa nito. As soon as she was inside, she saw Gael, his mom and his dad circling around him. Valerie? He greeted with hollow eyes. It looked like he was calling her for help. She just smiled at him. Tita, tito. Bati ni Valerie sa mga magulang ni Gael and gave them both a hug. You look as beautiful as always, Iha. Bati sa kanya ng tita sa linya. That dress is beautiful. It's from Tita, Ashley's latest collection. Magalang nasagot ni Valerie. Oh wow, I would need to check that out. Sit down, Iha. Masayang bati ng tita Gerald niya as he pointed out to the couch beside Gael now. Gael looked like he was about to be executed. We call for the both of you here dahil may bigla kami naisip. And we ran this over to your dad too, Valerie. He agreed only if you will agree, sabi niya. Panimula ni Gerald. She knew how he could be intimidating. Gael partly got that from him. What is it, Tito? We realize we haven't even formally announced our engagement yet. And we figured since the Yangs are going to be here, what better day to announce than today? The Yangs would surely gain more confidence knowing that the Blancos are behind us every step of the way. I know it's a business thing, Iha. I just wanted to see if you're okay with this. Whatever you want is what we will do. Her tita Celine was smiling in front of her while Gael was speechless beside her. She turned her head to Gael to ask him, Babe, what do you say? Gael looked at her emotionlessly. She clearly knew he realized how fuck up this was. She saw Alondra outside bago siya pumasok dito, so he clearly intended to introduce her tonight to his parents. Naunaan siguro siya ng mga magulang nito tungkol sa plan nitong i-announce formally ang kasal. He was clearly fucked. How could Gael say no? If nakatayada ng project na pinaghirapan niya along with the investors, he so badly had to be on the good side of the last couple of months. I think it's the perfect time, Gael said, a little too firmly, na parang rehearsal at ilang beses ito yung sinabi sa isipan. Valerie just nodded. Well then, let's do it. Valerie wanted to talk to Lawrence before the announcement, but there was no more time. Pagkatapos sila magkasundos ng this announcement in Gerald's study, she was thrust into the backstage in time for the opening speech for the Allegri couple, Celine and Gerald. Gael was in front of her and he was pacing back and forth. How could you bring her here? Didn't you know this was gonna happen? She asked Gael. She was deeply concerned for Alondra na nakita niya kanina. Malungkot na umiling to sa kanya. I never thought we needed to do something as drastic as this. I thought all we needed to do was appear before the Yangs and greet them together. I brought Alondra here to introduce her to you and to my parents. I plan to come clean to them after the party. Pero naunahan ka ni Tito? Tumangutang ko si Gael. I don't know what to do, Valerie. We will get through this. After this announcement, you can just pull Alondra to a corner and we can talk. I can testify with you with that this engagement is nothing but a business agreement and that we're only friends. Gael hugged her quickly. Thank you, Valerie. Do you love her? She then inquired. She is a sucker for good love story, kahit hindi yung love story niya. She saw the deep concern he had in his eyes for Alondra. Parang takot na takot tong masaktan ng dalaga. I do, he replied. I do, I just don't want her to see this announcement. I hope she forgives me. Don't worry, she will. It will be quick. Puntahan mo kagad siya after your speech, okay? Was all he said. Ma'am sir, stand by na po kayo. Sing it ang event organizer. Nagbibigay po na po ng speech na Ma'am Celine at Sir Gerald. The woman pushed them to ready themselves to go out into the stage. Valerie heard her tito Gerald speaking. Wala na ako mahiling pasaro na to kundi magkaroon ng apo. As such, I would like to take this opportunity to announce a very important undertaking. My son has been gone for a while now to pursue his studies abroad. He has gotten back with more knowledge for the company at nakita kong potensyal niya in the short time that he's been back in the Philippines. But more than going back home for the company, he also went back to pursue his childhood sweetheart. At halos lahat ng mga besita ay nag-react sa sinabing ito ni Gerald. Everyone seemed to be clapping and shouting with joy, except for the both of them. Gael clearly looked horrified as it turned events, and Valerie just laughed to herself. 
How funny Destiny really was. She escaped Florence only to end up in a fake engagement. Pero hindi naman siya pwedeng sasihin ni Gael for finally finding the person he loves. Love is really, indeed, a privilege for the few. My son is now engaged to the wonderful Miss Valerie Blanco. Let's please both give them a hand. Her tita Gerald continued, and the event organizer pushed them towards the stage. The laughter and clapping grew even louder. Gael held her hand as they went inside the public view. She tried to smile but deep down, she just wished the whole world would eat her up. Her life has always been about other people. She has always taken pride with helping others people and putting other people first before anyone else. She liked being of help to others, but she never knew she would also hate herself for it. She looked at Gael. He was also fakely smiling at everyone. She tried to look for Alondra among the audience, but she was nowhere to be seen. Wala to sa table na kinakita niya dito kanina. She was deeply concerned for her. And she also realized, is anyone else concerned for her state? She seemed to always be concerned about what other people are feeling, what other people need. And now she's wondering if someone ever did the same for her. Did someone care about her enough to wonder what she's truly feeling? Behind her smile. She looked for Lawrence among the audience, but he was also nowhere in sight. She was trapped in a fake engagement that will soon be announced to be a complete far sooner or later. But she tried her best to smile again for the sake of her friend beside her. Valerie was staring at herself in the mirror. Nagkulong si Valerie ngayon sa powder room because she couldn't stop herself from crying. After the announcement, nakita niya kung paano mabilis na moba ng stage si Gael, clearly looking for Alondra everywhere. She wasn't hurt because he left her on the stage. She was hurt because she did not know why she wouldn't find a love like like that in this lifetime. Mabuti naman siyang tao. She tried to be of help to everyone. She tried to love and wait for the man she loves which turned out to be an endless waiting game that will never happen. She just hoped that one day she will eventually be okay with being alone. Pinalas ni Valerie ang mga luha at inayos maling sarili. She had to get out of this with dignity. She tried to smile at herself in the mirror to start the pretense once again. Pero pagbukasan ng pinto palabas ng powder room, she saw Lawrence waiting for her outside. Valerie, he said and quickly pulled her into a tight embrace. She quickly pushed him away. Afraid that someone might see them. Nagpalingaling nga sa hallway and good thing, wala dong ibang tao. What are you doing here? I was looking for you. He quickly responded. Bakit? You agreed to that announcement? Galit na galit ang tanong ni Lawrence. Are you really that stupid? This is my life. I will do what I want. You know Gael loves her. I know. I'm just trying to help Gael with its parents. Kako sabi namin mamaya si Alondra to tell her the truth that nothing will ever happen between me and Gael. That this is just a business agreement between us so that I could help him. So you let yourself be used again? Masaya ka ba sa ginagawa mo sa sarili mo? You're letting yourself to be a doormat for other people so to step on. Forgive me, Valerie, please. Nagulat si Valerie sa ginawa ni Lawrence. Get up! Ano bang ginagawa mo? I'm sorry, Valerie. I'm sorry for all the pain I've caused you. Paulit-ulit na wika nito. He was so strong that she couldn't push him away. Let's go now, Lawrence. She firmly said, I won't, he whispered. I won't let go now. Nagulat si Valerie nang biglang buhatin siya nito at ilagay sa balikat nito. Her head was now hanging upside down with the view of his broad back na pinagpapalo niya sa gulat. What are you doing? Put me down, Lawrence. Too late, Valerie. Too late. Was all he said bago ni Lawrence tinahakang palabas ng bahay ni Nagael through the back gate. He easily found his car at pinasok siya sa passenger seat to lock her inside bago tutuwak papapunta ng driver's seat. Are you crazy? What do you think you're doing? Sigaw ni Valerie sa kanya at pilit inaanda kang sasakyan, pero hindi magawa. This is kidnapping, at pwede kitang sampahan ng kaso. Then sue me. Uto si Lawrence dito at mabilis na pinarurot ang sasakyan. The next thing Valerie knew what they were, were in a private hangar. May kausap sa telepono si Lawrence, habang nagdadrive at nagpapark sa harapan ng isang aeroplano. What's this? Kinakaba ang tanong ni Valerie when Lawrence dropped the call at pinasok muli sa bulsang telepono. He then unlocked the car doors and looked at her. Try to run at mapapagod ka lang. I have my employee security surrounding the perimeter. What are we doing? Kinakabahan pa rin tanong niya. We're flying somewhere. You're crazy. What makes you think to sasama ako? Isa pa hinahanap na ako ng magulang ko for sure. I dropped my purse in Gael's house when you carried me like a madman kanina. I will deal with your family later. He said at bumaba na ng sasakyan. He quickly circled the car to open her side of the door at pagkatapos hindi na siya papunta na side entrance ang private airplane sa hangar na yun. Tell me first kung saan tayo pupunta. She demanded and tried pulling her arm back. Go up. 
He said referring to the stairs leading up the plane. Tilitigan lang ni Valerie ito ng masama. Not making a move. Valerie, please, just go up if you don't want me manhandling you. Bubuhatin kita patas pag hindi ka pa naglakad. Pagbabanta ni Lawrence. She gritted her teeth in annoyance at nagsimulang maglakad pataas. Lawrence quickly followed behind her. When she entered the plane, she saw two flight attendants waiting for there with refreshments in hand. The plane was big enough for ten people riding in first class. Nang makapasok din si Lawrence, sinarado ng pinto sa likod nito and he led her to the two front row seats. Thank you. He whispered to the flight attendants, handing them refreshments. Tinanggap ni Valerie ang tumingin sa bintarang nasa tabi niya. It was dark outside because it was night time. Di niya alam kung paano nakapag-arrange ng flight na ang ganun kabila si Lawrence. I need to call my mom at least. Pagpapamilit ni Valerie. Lawrence breathed deeply. Fine. He said and dialed something in his phone before putting it on his ears. Hi, Tita Sari. Yes, I am with her. I'm sorry, the party was just too much for us to bear, kaya umalis na kami. No, she's fine. Yes, Tita. We are flying to Boracay for the weekend. Nandaki ang mata ni Valerie sa narinig. She has work. Pirit niyang inago ang cellphone mula rito but he was quick to pin her hands. I have a place there and we just want to get away to talk. Patuloy na wika nito sa mama niya. Aha. Yes, I'm sincere. We can talk about it when I get back. Tita, I plan to marry your daughter as soon as possible. She was caught breathless as a sudden declaration. Para siyang naistatwa sa sinabi niya ni Lawrence. Thanks, Tita. Bye. I'll see you soon. At ibinabanan itong telepono. You're crazy, was all she said. Did I just lie to her parents? I meant every word I said, Valerie. Now it's was way past your bedtime. Time to sleep and relax. We will be at my resort after an hour and a half. He said and kissed her firmly on the lips before reclining their chairs to catch some sleep. But his last words kept her intrigued. Mukhang di si Valerie makakatulog or makakarelax at all sa buong flight na ito. Magaban ng alas on sila na maglanding ang private plane ni Lawrence sa Boracay. Valerie was not able to sleep all throughout the flight. Pero nagpanggap siyang tulog para hindi kausapin ni Lawrence. Her mind was just in total chaos. Hindi niya alam kung bakit pinaalam ito sa mama niya na magpapakasal sila. Is he crazy? Does he even have to lie like that? Inalalayan siya ni Lawrence sa pagbaba ng hagdan para sumakay sa isang itim na SUV. Come on, Valerie. Anyayan nito sa kanya pasakay ng sasakyan nang mapansin ang binatang natigilan siya. She just glanced at him. Why is he being sweet now? She stepped inside the black SUV at mabilis at tumabito sa kanya. Where are we going? I just bought a resort here and I'm really scheduled to visit it tonight to check one construction and renovation progress. So nadamay lang pala siya sa trabaho nito. I wasn't really expecting to bring you, but that asshole really dragged your name through that event. I don't care if it's his birthday. I'm ending this pretense between you and him. Ubandar na ang sasakyan papunta sa resort na sinasabi nito. I don't need rescuing Lawrence, and Gael is not taking advantage of me. No one can take advantage of you anymore. I'm sorry, Valerie. Bulong ni Lawrence. He grasped her hand and intertwined their fingers. Napansin ni Lawrence sa isang sing-sing sa mga daliri niya. You weren't wearing any rings when we went to the party. Who's this from? From Tita Celine? An engagement ring for tonight's supposedly engagement ceremony. Tipid na sagot ni Valerie. Mabilis sinabad yun ni Lawrence. Hey, what are you? You don't need this anymore. We got it at ibinulsang sing-sing. I'm returning this to her as soon as we're back in Manila. Binawi ni Valerie kagad ng mga kamay niya mula rito. I will replace this with an even better one. Patuloy pang bulong ni Lawrence na parang nagmamaktol pa rin dahil may pa siyang suot na sing-sing. You don't have to say that to my mom. Pinapaasa mo lang siya. She is actually wondering now kung bakit palagi mo lang kong sinusundo. I mean every word I say, Valerie. You'll see. Oh, come on, Lawrence. Cut the crap. We've been together for eight years at wala ko narinig na kahit ano mula sa'yo to make things official between us. So what changed now? It wasn't supposed to come out hatefully pero yun nga ang nangyayari. Napatingin si Lawrence sa driver nila who probably could hear their conversation now. I'm sorry, Valerie, but look. I'll make it up to you. You'll see. I brought you here to just that. So please just give me another chance and I'll prove you to you my intentions are clear now. Wika ni Lawrence. Hindi na si Valerie nagsalita pa matapos sa mga sinabing to ni Lawrence. She didn't know whether to believe him or not. She has been burned really badly the last eight years. Is there still hope for them now? It was an exclusive resort. Wala pa iba mga besita doon dahil nire-renovate pa ang ilang mga villas. It was a five-star hotel villa that looks like my conos. Grace with its little pathways and strictly just white and blue color scheme. Sinalubong sila ng isang bellboy at binuhat ng mga damit para ihatid sa isang secluded villa. 
It was two-story, with its own pool and front beach access. Salamat, Kito. Valerie heard Lawrence whisper bago binigyan ng tip ang binatilyo. The boy left Lawrence luggage sa harap ng pinto at nagpaalam na sa kanila. It was almost midnight, nang medyo pagod na rin siya sa biyahe. Lawrence opened the front door and they were welcome in a spacious room with glass walls shallowing a magnificent view of the beachfront. May opening sa kabilang side leading to a private pool and outdoor path. Madalim na pero kitang-kita ni Valerie ang kinang ng tubig sa labas. For sure, the view would be wonderful come done. Lawrence closed the door and dumped his luggage in one corner. Unfortunately, since this was just a spur of the moment getaway, I didn't ready you any clothes so bukas na lang tayo mamili ng mga kailangan mo. There are toiletries in the bathroom. You can just use bathrobe to sleep tonight or you can opt to just sleep naked. Pahabol ni Lawrence. She quickly threw him dagger stairs and walked towards the well-stocked kitchen. Bakit may mga pagkain at groceries dito? At ilan ang kwarto? I'm supposed to stay here for a week to oversee finishing. And this whole villa is supposed to be a honeymoon suite for couples so there's only one bedroom. All right. She replied sarcastically. How apt. She should be in a celebratory mood than for being in a honeymoon suite. And it's upstairs? Tumangot ang si Lawrence. Valerie went past the huge living area with white couches and some wooden furniture before going upstairs. True enough, the bedroom was even better than she imagined. It has the beachside feel with high-end quality at all corners. The bed was huge, even bigger than a king-size bed. Meron din tong balcony leading to a view of a beach out front. Binuksan ni Valerie ang sliding door ng balcony and the sound of the ocean immediately filled the room. Malawig din ang hangin ng gabi niyon. This feels nice, she whispered. Nagulat siya nang yakapan siya ni Lawrence mula sa likuran. We can stay for as long as you like. Mabilis siyang kumalas mula dito and step back inside. I have a job. Hindi ko pa dala mga gamit ko. I don't even have my laptop so I can stay here. If pwede mo akong ihanap ng flight? Valerie, look. I brought you here to prove to you that I'm willing to change for you. Do you think I care whether you keep your job now? And do you think I will allow you to leave without a ring on your finger? Valerie did not respond. She just stared at him. Di niya maintindi ng sarili. Bakit parang ayaw nang maniwala ng sarili niya na kaya nitong magbago para sa kanya? That he can be serious and intentional with her? She breathed deeply and tried to think clearly. Well, my job is everything to me. Kahit kailan di ako sinakta ng karir ko. So if I'm to choose between you and my job, I will gladly choose the latter. Kitang-kita ni Valerie kung paano nagsalubong ang kilin ng binata. Fine, sigaw ni Lawrence. I'm having my secretary fly here with your laptop first thing tomorrow morning. Ano pa bang kailangan mo? Just my phone, my laptop, and some clothes. We'll shop tomorrow. You don't need to get your old clothes. My clothes aren't old. Pagtatama niya. I just think this is the beach so we should get some beach-appropriate clothes. He walked into the bathroom at kumuna isang puting bathrobe doon. Go on, take a bath. I'll order in some food before we sleep. Inabot niyang bathrobe and step inside the bathroom. Aren't you going out? On second thought, we can take a bath together if you want. Seryosong offer nito. Oh no, not this time. The sound of the ocean was that woke Valerie up. Medyo maliwanag na rin. Puti ang mga kortinang tumatabing sa kwarto nila, kaya mabilis nakapasok ang liwanag. Dahan-dahan binuksan ni Valerie ang mga bata to see herself on a huge bay facing a beach front view na natatakpan ng see-through na puting kortina. She can somewhat see the crystal blue waters of the beach. It was a sight to see. Uupo sana siya para mating ng tanong maayos ng maramdaman na may mabigat na bagay sa bewang niya. It was an arm and it belonged to a sleeping naked Lawrence. She tried to escape his grasp pero mas lalong humigpit ang yakap ito sa bewang niya kaya napilitan siyang gisingin to. Wake up! Bulong niya kay Lawrence at tinapikto ng marahan. His eyes fluttered open and he smiled upon seeing her. I am dreaming, ain't I? She wasn't impressed. Hindi ka na nanaginip. Unfortunately for me too. Now can you let go? I want to stand up and go out to see the beach. Oh, sorry. Lawrence unwrapped himself from her sat up. She quickly stood as soon as she had set her free. In just her bathroom, naglakad siya pababa ng villa nila. Lawrence was just right behind her. Binuksan niyang front door and went out to the terrace to take in the sea breeze. This is amazing, she whispered, mostly to herself. Pero nandoon sa tabi niya si Lawrence and was quick to hug her from behind. I know. I wish I could wake up like this every day. Mabilis siyang kumawala sa yakap ito at hinarap ito. Can you wear something? Nakaboxers ka lang. Baka makita ka ng mga empleyado mo. It's fine. They are used to seeing in my bench trunks and around here anyway. Naainis si Valerie sa isipin halos hubad na itong nakakita ng ibang mga babaeng empleyado nito doon. You're staring at my crotch. Nakakalokong pansin ni Lawrence. 
Are you fantasizing about me in broad daylight, Valerie? She quickly lifted her gaze back to his eyes. It's not that impressive. And she turned around to gaze at the beach again. I want to go swimming. I'm going swimming now. Are you even wearing something underneath that robe? Pahabo na sigaw ni Lauren sa likod niya. She quickly removed her robe, drop it on the sand and dip into the water. You've got to be kidding me. Galit na sigaw ni Lawrence na makitang nakapantis lang siyang lumubog sa tubig. She swam farther away from the shore na marinig na sa malag si Lawrence sa paglusong sa tubig. But he was quick enough to chase after her under the water. Thank all your gods, no one is around because I will be a murderer kung may nakakita sa iyong hubad. I'm not naked. I have my underwear on. Pagdadahilan pa ni Valerie. You're not wearing a bra. Oh, cut it out. This villa is secluded, just as you said. Now leave me in peace. I won't. You can swim but with me. She controlled her anger and just looked at him emotionlessly. Fine. Release me then. He did as was told, pero nakatitig pa rin to sa kanya as she swam away. Valerie tried to relax and enjoy the calm waters. She has never had a vacation in a year. Naging busy siya sa iba't iba mga proyekto niya nitong mga nakarang buwan. Her mother was involving her in a lot of projects already. Naramdaman niyang iniisip na nitong ibigay sa kanya ang pamamahala ng foundation nila. She would be thrilled if that's the case. But for now, this vacation is worth everything. As she was enjoying the waters, narinig ni Valerie ang tawag na isang babae mula sa terasa ng vela nila. She turned around to see all women with long black hair waving at her husband. Lawrence got out of the water and was now walking to the woman in just his boxer shorts. Galit na galit na sinundan niya ng titig ang mga ito. The woman sat on one of the terrace lounge chairs and Lawrence was quick to sit across her. She couldn't hear what they were talking about. Kaya dalit na rin siyang umahon sa tubig at sinot muli ang bathroom. Mabilis niyang nilakad pabalik ng terasa at ganita ng bisita. Hi, Miss Valerie. Batay ng babae sa kanya at tumayo para makipagkamay. Hi. She greeted Beth and accepted her hand. Who is this young lady, Lawrence? She squidly asked the naked hunk sitting down beside her after giving him a quiz kiss on the lips in front of the beautiful visitor. Jana, Miss Valerie. I'm Jana. I brought everything you need. I even managed to get your laptop and pursue from the party. I also took the liberty to get you some clothes from the nearest mall here. It's all in your living area now. Wow, thanks. She said shocked after realizing she was his secretary. Great, thanks, Jana. I just need to be updated on the current progress of the additional investors for this resort. If you can just leave the papers and the presentation in my email. Yes, sir, definitely. I left the printed copies on your kitchen counter. Ever so reliant. Masayang kwento ni Lawrence. Anyway, do you want anything? Coffee? No, sir, I'd better be on my way. I don't want to intrude in your pre-honeymoon. Alright, thanks. Lawrence said. Goodbye for now, sir. Miss Valerie, I hope to see you a lot more often now, miss. And she walked off the path back to the main clubhouse. Nakatitig lang si Valerie sa likod ng pigura ng paris sa babae. And when the woman was far enough, she commented, Your secretary is too pretty and smart. I've never met her before because he never visited me in the office. He said and stood up to go inside. Well, I know how much you love to be surrounded by beautiful women. Smart women, he corrected. I like smart, efficient women at work, but like a particular smart, beautiful, kind-hearted, sexy woman on my bed, he said, looking at her with so much lust in his eyes. What breakfast do you want? She asked, changing the conversation and walking towards the kitchen. You, he answered, turning behind her. There's bacon here. I'm gonna go get cooking. I plan to check at least some emails and call my parents in a bit. I'm sure they're worried but now. They aren't. I talked to your mom last night, remember? But my dad won't be thrilled to hear you kidnap me after my engagement announcement with another man. Oh, come on, Valerie. Kael is probably off somewhere with Alondra. Stop playing a fool in this charade and just tell him the truth. Gael screwed up and you were just helping him. But it doesn't explain why I am ending up going on a sudden beach trip with you. I already told you why. He quickly answered. But you are not just willing to listen. He grabbed a frying pan and nudged her aside as he started cooking the bacon she was holding. She was left dumbfounded. Valerie did not even bother speaking to Lawrence after breakfast. She just opened her laptop and started working in the terrace. Patapos na si Valerie na masagot lahat ng work emails niya. Nang biglang tumarog ang personal phone niya, it was her dad. Hello, dad? Where in the world are you, Valerie? Galit na galit na sigaw ng ama niya sa kabilang linya. She saw Lawrence come out into the terrace in just his boxer shorts while still carrying a tray of food for her. Dad, I'm in Boracay. Lawrence then got alerted that she was talking to her dad. 
Why do I hear that you're out with your fiancé, but your fiancé's best friend? Dad, look, I can explain. But that goddamn bono boy. Maring utos ng ama niya. Dad, he's not a boy. You're making me sound as if I'm with a teenager. Then make him act like a grown man. Bakit kaya itataka sa walang pasabi kung maayos ang intensyon niya sa'yo? Patuloy pang sigaw ng ama niya. So, Valerie had no choice. She extended the phone to Lawrence and just shrugged. Lawrence accepted it and answered, Yes, Tito? His voice remained even and normal. At dahil sumisigaw ang ama niya sa kabilang linya, narinig ni Valerie ang sinasabi nito kahit nasa tinga na ni Lawrence ang telepono niya. You goddamn kidnap my daughter to be your plaything. Don't you have any shame? She is engaged. With all due respect, sir, I just saved your daughter from embarrassment, and she is not a plaything for me. I do plan to marry her. Marry her? You have been sneaking into our house since you were a young boy, climbing up my gates for the last years or so. At ngayon mo lang sasabihin sa akin na pakakasalan mong anak ko? Gulat na gulat si Lauren sa sinabi ng ama niya, but so was Valerie. Oops, did her parents know all along? Patuloy pa rin sa pagsalita ang ama niya. I wanted to marry her off to Gerald's son. Dahil gusto kong seryosohin mo ng anak ko. I think that rattled you, didn't it? I'm glad it worked, young man. I actually was not planning to really marry her off to a man she doesn't love. So I'm glad you woke up, dumb head. Pero hindi ako sangayon sa ginawa mo ngayon na basta wala lang siyang tatangayin ng walang paalam. Speak up, or I will send my soldiers there to kill you. Parang naistato si Lauren sa litan niyang iyon ng ama niya. Tito, I'm sorry. I didn't know you know. Well, I wanted to talk to your daughter alone for now. That's why I took her here in my resort. She is safe, I promise. Nothing happened between us. I just really want to talk to her. She has not agreed to my plan yet. Well, have you proposed? Sigaw ng ama niya sa kabilang linya. No, Tito, I haven't. Sagot ni Lawrence. Eh, tanga ka pala talaga eh. She won't agree if you haven't even proposed. Kneel down and propose to her. You've been climbing up trees and fences for the past years. Siguro naman, marunong kang lumuhod eh, no? Okay, Tito. I will. Just give me time. I really need to talk to her and convince her to take me back. Ko hindi ka tatangatanga noon pa. You could have gotten her yes a long time ago. Lauren said and looked at her sincerely. I know, Tito. I know how stupid I am, and I'm praying for it now. Lawrence then looked at her sincerely. I know, Tito. I swear and I'll make sure she has a ring on her finger when we return. Siguro duhin mo lang. Ko hindi pa babaril kita sa luneta. Archie Blanco dropped the line, and Lawrence was finally able to breathe. I felt like I was underwater and unable to breathe for the whole duration of that conversation. Napagod ako. Her face was all red and she was so confused. Did that conversation between Lawrence and her dad really happen? My dad knows about us and you sneaking in my room the last years. Nakakahiya. Wala na akong mukhang iharap sa kanila ni mama. Seriously? That was your key takeaway in that conversation? How about the fact that I just asked your father and in marriage and he basically approved? Oh, I haven't said yes to that yet. She picked up the tray of food and went inside the house, leaving Lawrence to think by himself. Hindi na malay ni Valerie na katulog para sa pagkakain niya ng harian. She woke up in bed again at may kumot na siya ngayon. Lawrence must have probably put the blanket over her dal bukas ng aircon. She looked for him everywhere pero wala to sa kwarto kaya to may usat mo ba? The clock says it's p.m. at tumitik siya sa labas. God, it was sunset and it was so beautiful. Napalabas si Valerie sa terasa para titigan pa yung lalo and then she noticed there was a table with two chairs set up right beside the beach. Nasa lab doon isang makeshift tent na naroon na wala naman kanina. She walked towards it and there were food laid out with a bottle of wine and some candles in the middle. I thought you would never wake up. Bulong Lauren sa tenga niya. Napapitlag siya sa gulat at tinitigan to. What's all this? Narinig mo naman ang sinabi ng papa mo kanina, hindi ba? That I should, you know, propose and kneel down. Well, she wouldn't want him to do that just because he was told to do so. She wanted him to do it because he wanted to. Hindi mo na kailangan gawin to, and I'm not even dressed properly for dinner. You look beautiful in anything, Valerie. He casually commented that hindi lang isang upuan. Come on, sit down. I want you to enjoy the food. This is specially prepared from a chef I've flown in from a resort in Italy. Pinirata ko siya para lumipat dito. Wow! She said while looking at the food. Eat! Hindi mo naubos ang lunch mo kanina. Your dad must have probably stressed you out. Umiling siya. You're the one who's stressing me out. He breathed deeply and sat across her. Pinaghiwan na steak si Valerie before putting it on her plate with some mashed potatoes. She tasted the food and smiled. This is pretty good. Perfect for the sunset, right? I would have to agree. She said and continued to eat. I'm happy you liked it. 
Then there was silence between them. Lawrence opened the bottle of wine and poured some on both of the wine glasses. Thanks, she muttered while eating her steak and staring at the sunset. Valerie, I just want to say how sorry I am for hurting you. The past years, I'm sorry for being such a damn fool and for not realizing my feelings early on. He grabbed her free hand, the one not holding the fork as she chewed on her steak. She just stared at him, confused at what to feel. How she wanted to hear this from him for a long time now. Pero bakit di pa rin siya masaya? Parang kulang pa rin. May iba pa rin siyang gustong marinig. I know you might think that I just use you. But please know that I was sincerely your friend then. I would protect you from anything. Hindi ka nagka-boyfriend dali na harang kong lahat ng lalaki nagkakagusto sa iyo. God, did you know I even threatened one of them in the boys' locker room in our university? I heard his plan to invite you in our senior prom. Ang kapal na mukha ng lalaking yun. I clearly remember I was mad at you dahil hindi mo man ang sinabi sa akin na pupunta ka and that you would wear that hideous outfit. In my defense, I wanted to look mature then, she said. Mature doesn't mean revealing your breasts for everyone to see. She could see he was starting to get pissed with the memory. But then again, it's my fault. Muling pagbawi ni Lawrence. Had I had the guts to bring our relationship out into the open, then you wouldn't be forced to go with your brother to track me down. It was my fault. I'm sorry. That was a long time ago. She took a sip of wine just to control her emotions. He was starting to get in her walls now, and it doesn't look good. Stupid me for making you wait that long, he commented, and then he reached out to grab both her hands now. Valerie, I can't express how sorry. Stop apologizing. I have forgiven you. Naina si Valerie sa kakasori nito. I really don't deserve you. You are so kind-hearted and pure. That's why I feel I need to be with you. You need someone to protect you because people could abuse you with your kindness. I can very much take care of myself. Thank you. She said while pulling her hands away from him. Valerie, help me out, please. Ano pa bang kailangan kong gawin? It seems like whatever I say or do, you would hate me. Pag bumakaawan ito sa kanya ngayon. She just wanted to hear those words. She wanted to hear from eight years from now. Does he want to marry her just because he wanted to protect her? Because she is too kind? Yan lang ba? Di ba siya talaga mahal nito? Ni katiting lang. I want you to marry me, not because naawa ka sa akin, but it seems like that's how you feel. I'm not some pitiful woman, Lawrence. Yes, I might have waited for you for years, pero kaya ko mabuhay mag-isa nang wala ka. I can protect myself, not because I'm kind. I'm vulnerable or naive. Really? Kaya pala nagpapagamit ka kay Gael? Mag-aawin na naman ba tayo about this? I'm sorry, but I just can't help. But if this is the proposal that you have prepared, I'm sorry, I'm not interested. If protection is what I want, I could just gladly hire security. She stood up at iniwan ang napkin niya sa upuan at pagkatapos nagsimulang maglakad pabalik ng villa. The nerve of that man? She thought she would finally hear those words from his mouth. She thought he wanted to marry her because he loved her. Pero mukhang ginawa pa siyang cherry case nito na kailangan ng protection. Valerie, that's not what I meant. Habol na sigaw ni Lauren sa kanya. She could hear him after her kaya mas bilinasan niya pang lakad. Pumasok siya ng vila nila at tumakbo papunta sa kwarto. She wanted to lock herself alone in the room, but Lawrence was quick enough to enter before she could do so. Ano pa bang kailangan mo? I want to rest and be alone. Sigaw ni Valerie dito. Valerie, that's not what I meant. I want to protect you, yes, but it's not because you are naive or stupid. Then what? He kneeled down in front of her and grabbed her by the waist so she wouldn't be able to get away from him. I want to protect you for the rest of my life because I love you, Valerie. I've always loved you since we were kids. I've always wondered why I was so protective of you. You are my angel. I could never take my eyes off you. I don't want any other guy coming near you. At first, I thought it was because we grew up together, and I see you as a sister, but our quick stolen kiss when we were just teenagers debunked that. I wanted to protect you, Valerie, because I love you. I'm sorry it took a long while for me to realize that. She felt like she was hit by a hurricane. The impact of his declaration of love left her reeling. Mabuti nilang hawak siya nito sa bewang. It has kept her standing upright because she felt weak now. Her chest was just unexpectedly full of joy. So this is how it feels like to have love returned. This is how mutual love feels like to have the person you love also love you back. It feels utterly amazing. You're crying? May nasabi na naman ba akong mali? nag lang tanong ni Lawrence while wiping her tears away. Babe, come on. Tell me and I will make it right. Oh, I know. I forgot something. He quickly fished for something from his pocket and he took out the block box from it. Lawrence opened it for Valerie to see a beautiful diamond ring. Valerie, will you marry me and spend a lifetime with me? He sincerely asked and it made her cry all the more. 
Oh, Christ, please stop crying. Tell me what I did wrong, Valerie. He was panicking now, trying to wipe her tears away while also kissing her cheeks to make her feel alright. Nakatayo na to ngayon at niyakap siya. You didn't do anything wrong. I'm just so speechless and so happy. She managed to whisper in between sobs. So, you accept? He hopefully asked. Where is the ring? Lawrence gladly pulled out the box and the ring inside. He quickly slipped it on her fingers. I haven't said yes yet. She squealed in laughter. Oh, you don't have any choice. I would have forced it on you had you said no. He wiped her tears completely and kissed her tenderly on the lips. I'm sorry for being an asshole, but this asshole is all yours. I love you, Valerie. I love you too, Lawrence. So you will marry me, right? Yes, finally. I thought your father would have to point a gun in my head first before you say yes. She laughed and then they kissed again, ending up with both of them in bed. A stern Ryan Blanco and Sarita Blanco welcomed both of them. Kakawi lang ni na Valerie at Lawrence galing Boracay, and Lawrence drove her home to also talk to her parents formally. It has been two days since they got engaged formally, matapos nang iyakan at tawanan nila sa secluded villa na iyon. I feel like your dad's gonna kill me. Bolong Lawrence sa kanya napapalapit na sila sa sala, at nakikita nilang animoy galit na mukha ng ama ni Valerie. Relax, she whispered back. Ma, pa, bati ni Valerie and gave the both of them kisses. Sorry na delay yung uwi namin. Umulan kasi at nagpapatila pa kami. Hi, tito, tita. Bati ni Lawrence na tumalik din sa pisingin ng mama ni Valerie. He was supposed to shake hands with Valerie's father but he remained stoic. Mabuti at nakabalik kayo kahit may bagyo. Masayang bati ni Sarita sa nilang dalawa. Si Archie po? Lawrence asked. Well, he hasn't come home yet. Something about a dare? That he has to live with his friend for a week just to fulfill a dare. Oh! Lawrence exclaimed. Di pa rin pala tapos ang dare niyan with Selena. A friend of Alondra that they met in Gal's birthday dinner. Anyway, dinner is ready. All Valerie's favorite. Harin na kayo. Sarita led them to the grand dining hall. Umupo sa headchair ang ama ni Valerie at ang mama naman ay nasa kanan nito. So Valerie chose to sit to her dad's left side at tumabi naman sa kanya si Lawrence. Wow, Hama, you really didn't have to do this. Masayang komento ni Valerie after seeing all the food laid out in front of them. Oh, I know. We have something to celebrate about kaya nagpaganda talaga ako. Masayang wika ng mama niya. Meron nga ba? Nakakatakot ang tanong ng papa niya. While eyeing Lawrence. Yes, sir. I formally propose to your daughter. I promise you she'll come back with the ring on her finger, right? And she said yes. Natatawa si Valerie. Doran seemed so tense in front of her dad. Parang high school to rin ako ng teacher's recitation. Congratulations! This makes me so happy. Pati nga naman, iha! Masayang wika ng mama niya while asking for her hand. She showed off her diamond ring to her mother, who squealed with joy. Sabi ko na nga, but akayong magkakatuluyan sa huli eh. I never doubted it for a minute. Na-discover namin tumatakas ka sa bakod namin, Lawrence, so nasa college kayo. Akala ni Manang Sela kasi may magdanakaw, pero ikaw lang pala, nung pinasabaybay namin ang sumunod na gabi. Masayang komento ng mama ni Valerie. Kung hindi ko patatakutin, di pa magpo-propose. Komento naman ng papa niya. Matapos sa ilang beses, umakit ng bakod. I only tolerated you because you were my best friend's son. Hadn't you been someone else's son, ipapapatay kita right then and then. Dad... Sing it naman ni Valerie. Be nice. I'm really sorry, sir. I promise to take care of Valerie as always. Pa, mom, how's Gael? Biglang tanong ni Valerie, steering the conversation elsewhere. She wanted to know kung nakapagpariwanag to namayos kay Alondra matapos mawitness na talaga ang fake engagement announcement nila. Hindi namin alam. Have you told Gael about your plans to break the engagement and get married with his best friend? Magugulat marahil si Gael dahil hindi niya alam ang tukol sa inyo. Her mother said worriedly, Oh, tita, he does know about us. Lawrence assured her mother, Pero ako nang bahalang kumausap kay Gael and also just in case, I can talk to si Tasilin and Tito Gerald. I'm sure they would need an explanation. Dapat lang. Matapos mong itana ng anak ko, kailangan mong paliwanag sa aming lahat. Singit muli ng papa niya. Pa, grabe ka naman. He proposed to me already. Aren't you happy for me? Pero pinaghintay ka ng ugok na yan. Hirit pa ng ama niya. Wala na si Valerie na sabi. I will make her happy, Tito. I'll do anything for to make up for the last years. I love your daughter more than my life, Doran sincerely said. Siguro duhin mo lang. I will skin you alive should you choose to hurt my only daughter. Yes, Tito. She just hid her laughter in amazement at Lawrence. 
ibang klaseng determinasyon nito ngayon. She is supremely happy now. Hindi ni Valerie alam na may sagot pala sa mga dasar at tinaing niya nito ang mga nakarang taon. It did not matter now whether she waited for 8 years. All she knew was that she's happy now, with him, and that's all that matters. She reached out under the table to hold his hand, and he held it back with the same intensity. Now she's sure that they would be together forever. Makalipas ng isang buwan, nagpakasal na agad sina Valerie at Lawrence. Lubos ang ligayang nararamdaman ni Valerie dahil sa wakas ang walang taong paghihintay niya na maging legal ang relasyon nila ni Lawrence ay nangyari na. Magkakasama na sila habang buhay at lalong pinadama ni Lawrence sa asawa ang kanyang pagmamahal. Masaya silang magkasama at bubuo ng isang masayang pamilya. At dito na po nagtatapos ang kabanata ng ating kwento at sana'y muli niyo po ako samaan sa mga susunod pang istoryang pag-ibig. Maraming salamat po. Ingat po tayong lahat.